Everything should be good. Should be good. Let's just uh, wait to go live. And that's it. There we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, Aquilon here. And of course, welcome back to each and every one of you. And if you're watching this over on YouTube, remember to hit the like button and also click the link in the description down below. Because it is always better when it's live. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday. Wednesday, the 2nd of November. We're almost in December. The year is almost over. Like, what the is actually happening here, bro? How is time moving this fast? Holy shit. Is it's quite surreal, if I'm honest. It is quite surreal. Anyway, we're probably going to be playing some Chaos Gate today. Reacting to Dragonflight Legacies. We're going to do Q&A later today. So, there's like a bunch of shit that we're going to be up to today. So I'm really looking forward to today's stream. It should be great fun. Um, just quickly want to check here. So 161 was the last one there. Did I not? Okay, I didn't upload 162. Hold up. I need to. Uh, Untamed video producer. There we go. I thought 162 two was already up but i guess not all right well let's uh just export this anyways i should be good okay uh 163 is up dog Vaz, how you doing brother great react andy video for today Ooh. are you talking about the dragonfly legacies one dog Vaz, or are you talking about um something else is there something i'm missing Avedon, how you doing brother Fuck you, Avedon. Also, welcome. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that video. Uh, couldn't do it yesterday, which sucks monkey dick. But uh, we, sh we should easily do it today. Uh, yeah, we're going to be reacting to that. We're going to be playing some Chaos Gate, maybe. Um, we're going to do the Q&A later today as well. Um, so we've got like a lot of shit to do. Old Boulder, how you doing, brother? Yeah, we've got we've got like a full day ahead of us. I'm really looking forward to that. Let me just quickly I need to change something here. Um your dragonfly reaction. Nah, it doesn't even matter because I don't have Q and A at two PM. Not that this matters because uh, I've already kind of fucked up. But it's fine. Alright, there we go. I'm fine, just done at the gym, and you? Oh, shit. Uh, what did you work out today? Like, what muscle group was yours today? Did you say watching Space Marine Creation Bird? Yes. Avedon, didn't we already watch that? I'm pretty sure we already watched the Space Marine Creation Bird. Or are you talking about the one um, that Luton did? Ace the Base, how you doing, brother? <laughs> why are you get why do you want to challenge me what the fuck did i do i've just started full body work three days a week oh shit okay no i do i do different muscle groups on different days I do four days a week uh which is which is fine because usually by the fourth day i'm so fucking sore that i just need the break today was chased I always like chest. I don't know why, but I find chest to be probably my favorite. Tomorrow is legs and biceps, um, which is not that fun, gonna be honest. <laughs> legs are fine. Biceps is fucking horrid. I don't like biceps. Um, biceps, chest, biceps, and legs. I do. I do. Um, so I do chest and triceps on Wednesdays, and then Thursdays is. Like, start squat, leg press, leg curls, uh, you know, bicep curls, all that shit. So, I do biceps and legs together. Jake, how you doing, brother? I'm good on you. East Village, how you doing, bro? Uh, Metal Fan, how you doing, bro? Lucretia, how you doing? Uh, so, uh, Thursday, going glutes? Oh, for fuck's sake. Dude. Yeah. Don't even remind me. I don't want to think about it now. But, yeah, glutes is on a, on a Thursday because... You have to end the week with legs, because usually after leg day, 
Uh, the next two days is uh, like everything's sore. You, you can't walk. You can't sit. Everything's in pain. So you kind of have to push legs, pull, split, echo. What do you mean, Abaddon split? <clears throat> uh, yeah, old baller. But yeah, I mean, I like going to the gym. Can I be honest? What I don't like is waking up this early in the morning because, dude, you're on such a, like, it's such a knife's edge. If you have, like, a bad night's sleep, you can't lie in, right? You can't, like, get a few extra hours of sleep because you want to be at the gym at five. So you have to wake up. And last night, something fucking weird happened, bro. Like, I'm, I just woke up at, like, before four, like, 20 minutes to four, I'm awake. I'm like, dude, what the fuck's going on? Why am I awake now? I, I, I don't fall back asleep. No, I just lie there. Like, oh, today's gonna fucking blow ass. Because I, I know I didn't get enough sleep. Because uh, I also couldn't fall asleep last night. I, I lay in bed for almost three hours trying to fall asleep. For some reason, couldn't sleep. So yeah, you're doing chest, the uh, chest, triceps, etc. Then legs next day, then pull muscles day after. Well, yeah, of course. You have to, right? Um, it is all the nut November. So, you know, don't have a choice. You kind of have to. But no, yeah, it's it's a pain in the ass, but someone has to do it. Off the phone. I'm, almost, I'm, I'm about to fuck myself in the ass here if I don't change this quickly. Um, all right, there we go. That's good. Don't push, legs, pull, splits. Uh, that's what I was asking. Push, legs, pull, split. I, I still don't understand where the split comes in. I, I'm not sure if I'm not following the fucking joke or whatever, but I don't understand where the split part comes in to that entire equation. How much does it take you guys to finish a day's workout? Now I'm going 100 push-ups, squats a day. Oh, shit. It's the base. I just do 40 minutes at the gym. Uh, I superset everything. So it's usually like three exercises at, at a time. Uh, so I do... Uh, so let's say, for example, chase today, right? I did... Um, I did flies. I, I did... Um, I don't know what it's called in, in English, but like overhead extensions. You lie on the bench and then you extend your your you you hold you have a bar in your hands right uh i did like 40 kgs no 20 kgs 25 kgs uh and you just extend your arms and pull it back up so sort of to get to the long chest muscles and a little bit of the trap area as well um so i do that and then i do uh and then i did you lie flat on the on the bench and uh just triceps right so you lower that same bar and and push up uh, that so tricep I, I don't know what it's called in english excuse me but i do those three exercises one after the other no breaks then i take a two minute break and then i do it again two minute break do it again uh, and i just run through that for like 40 minutes uh, different exercises three pair uh, three at a time just fucking go 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 and then i'm done you know, as soon as uh, six o'clock hits, I'm I'm done. I'm, I, I don't keep pushing longer than that because all I really care about is being healthy, right? I, I don't I don't really give a shit about having muscles or like being well built or anything like that. I just want to be healthy. That's really my only thing. Nandy Dandy, how you doing, brother? Yeah, it's been a fucking age. How you doing, bro? Um, you do push muscles one day, leg muscles next day, then pull muscles, then usually a break day, then do it again. It's called a workout split. No, but I don't do that, Avedon. I do... Uh, so, I start my week on Mondays. I start with shoulders. Okay? Mondays is shoulder day. Wednesday, uh, Tuesday is um, deadlift day. So, back and deadlifts. Then, or hammies and back. Then, Wednesdays is chest. And then, uh, Thursdays is legs those are the four days and then i have a three day split um yeah fuck y you know what the the crazy thing about going to the gym is 
you don't want to do it. Okay? No one wants to go to the fucking gym. Anyone that tells you that they wanted to go to the gym from the start is lying to you. No one wants to. It's an inconvenience. You, you, you're you going to come up with so many excuses as to why today isn't the right day. But once you start doing it, there is a clarity that the gym offers you that nothing else can give you. It's just, it's insane. You feel so clear. You feel so good. You feel refreshed. It is just, it's next level. I would, I would absolutely suggest that everyone start hitting the gym. Uh, yeah, just just go for like an hour every day. Don't do like don't overwork yourself or try to push yourself too hard. It'll just it'll come when it comes. The gym is my temple. I have to go to the gym every day so that I can shut my mind and be on autopilot for a while. Yeah, I wouldn't go every day. I like going four days a week. Why? Because it gives me the pleasure of looking forward to my three off days. But it is so much fun knowing. So tomorrow I'm doing legs. And then, as soon as I'm done with legs, I know that I am done for the week. So it's sort of like that thing you don't want to miss a day because you don't want to fuck up your off days. Because if I, say, for example, can't do Wednesday, then I have to go on Friday again. That sucks because Friday is supposed to be off day. Um, so, yeah, you don't want to miss a day. You just want to, you know, you don't want to close your eyes. You don't want to miss a thing. Uh, you just want to soak it in. That's, that's really it. Um, so yeah, uh, greetings, Ace the Base. Why am I now suddenly milady? What the fuck? Oh, you're talking to Maria. I just for a second there, I was like, Jesus, this chat is getting weird as fuck. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll miss you, babe. That's exactly it, Avedon. I'm glad someone fucking caught that. <laughs> what supplements do you take for the gym? If I may ask, I don't take any supplements. Sukimi, how you doing? No, I don't, I don't I don't believe you need to take supplements. Uh, again, you know, I'm not here because I'm trying to, like, build muscle or be, like, a fucking, you know, a, a bodybuilder or anything like that. I just want to be healthy. And in doing, like, in going to the gym, uh, I'm working all the muscles that need to be uh, worked. I'm getting nice blood flow in. Uh, I'm clearing my head. And that, that to me, is enough. If I start taking supplements, that's a whole new level of bullshit that I don't want to deal with. <clears throat> yeah, well, I don't drink Pepsi Max anymore. Uh, but yeah, uh, I I mean, I eat a lot of meat. So I think that's fine. No, I just, I just consume a fuck ton of meat. Uh, so yeah, that's it. What the living Christ? Avron, what are you talking about? Um, do you have... Uh, wait, do you have reading Savannah's book? Search, but you not made a video about it, right? Uh, little PPC, how you doing, bro? I have not read the Sylvanas novel. I've read most of the Sylvanas novel. I had a friend who sent me, like, a shit ton of the chapters. I think there's, like, three chapters that I haven't read of the Sylvanas novel. Um, mainly because I couldn't get hold of the book in South Africa, so my friend just sent me a bunch of, like, literally took pictures of the chapters and sent it to me. Um, I'm still waiting to get my hands on the book. As soon as I find a bookstore that has the book, uh, I'll buy it and then I'll finish it. Um, but no, I, I don't really want to make any videos on it. I did cover most of it though. Um, I didn't make a video specifically about the book, but I did cover a lot in the book insofar as if Blizzard took everything that was in the book, and they actually added it to the game. Or if the book launched before the the expansion, I think people would have liked Shadowlands a lot more. I'm not saying that people would have loved Shadowlands because Shadowlands had problems that had nothing to do with the story. Uh, but I think there was a large part, like a very large part of the dis or the hatred for the Shadowlands story came from the fact that no one had a fucking clue what was going on. Uh, like, there were people who, who sort of had their own hate cannon, and, and they trusted that hate cannon. So they were like, oh, yeah, I know what's going on. I guessed. Um, and then they liked their own hate cannon because they guessed it. Um, and that, that was fine. You know, it's fine. If, if, if you like your own hate cannon so much that it, it changes your perspective on the game, that's fine. But for me, uh, I... I really dislike the fact that so much that happened in Shadowlands happened from characters that I knew nothing about. 
So I think the Sylvanas novel would have solved so many of those issues if a lot of that information came to the player sooner. Uh, so yeah, th that's really that's the take that I had on the on the novel. Outside of that, a lot of the things that did happen in the novel we did kind of speculate about. Uh, some of the things we didn't get right, obviously, uh, didn't get everything right. But I'd say there there were a few instances where I where I read stuff and I was like, oh okay, so I was right about that. That's nice. And then a lot of instances where I went, fuck, I could have been more wrong. Uh, <laughs> it's just kind of just the nature of things, right? Um, check the Discord message for me. Chris, how you doing, brother? Um, I'll check now. Give me a moment. Give me a moment, chat. Give me a fucking moment. I am Birdman, you motherfucker. Thanks for the follow. Really appreciate that, brother. Uh, let me just check. Zukimi, give me a moment. Uh, Zukimi, I'm not seeing any... Wait, here we go. Um, huh. Wait, what the fuck happened here, Zukimi? What happened? That's that's nasty. That is a nasty fucking hit. Not gonna lie. Uh, I mean, it's not written off. It it can be fixed, but still, it's not great. That I would be pissed. If I had a car, I don't have a car, so I don't need to worry about this shit ever happening to me. Um, no, no, this is not, no, Zukimi is not from South Africa. Um, by the car coming from the left street. Worth it in all likelihood. Abaddon, what do you mean wouldn't be worth it? Wouldn't be worth fixing? Jake Reaper, I would, I would not do chicken. Um, I, I don't really care for chicken all that much. I find chicken to be an incredibly boring meat. Al Valentine, how you doing, bro? Uh, personally, just give me steak, bro. Some good red meat, a lot of fat on it. Oh, bro. This weekend, like, hopefully we can stream on Saturday. I'm going to show you guys something that's going to blow your fucking cock off. I, I kid you not. You, you will rip your cock off and throw it at the screen. That's how happy a lot of you are going to be. I found a place that makes Wagyu Bultong. Dude, they make Wagyu Bultong. I have never seen so much fat on a piece of dried meat in my life. It is just, it is pure perfection. It is the greatest thing. It melts in your fucking mouth, bro. It is so goddamn good. Well, what are you, what are you asking? What, what is Wagyu or what is Bultong? With my XIC. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Grimfield, how you doing, brother? Uh, damn, uh, you need to tell me. Uh, I live in South Africa. Jake Reaper, so it's in Somerset. Um, you're in Cape Town. In Somerset, in the Somerset Mall, there's a place called Mont Montagu? Mon Montagu something. They're all over the country, so you might actually find it in any of the Montagus. Um, but I know the, the only one that I've ever seen is the one in Somerset West, um, where, yeah, the Montago sells, uh, Wagyu beef, and it's not super expensive. I, I mean, it's not fucking cheap, right? But if you take normal Boltong is about 360 Rand per kilo, um, and that is about 540 Rand per kilo. I, I expected much more. So when I, when I ordered it the first time, I was like, okay, this is gonna be 900 a kilo easy, and yeah, no, it was 540. Uh, obviously, didn't get a fucking kilo. I got 200 bucks worth, and that was it. Uh, for those, uh, for my friends in the rest of the world that don't know what the fuck rands is, uh, they'd say it's about it's about 40 to 50 dollars in euro per kilo is what it costs. Um, for Wagyu. Damn, bro, I live in Joburg, but I will have a lookout for one near me. Dude, I'm pretty sure it's called Montagu. I could be fucking wrong. Let me just check. Uh, hold up. Let me just quickly... Montagu... Is it Montagu? Ah, I fucking forgot again. Jesus. Dude, this is what happens when just before stream, you're doing, s like, s all the thumbnails uh, and all the videos. I forgot to reset uh, the overlay. So I do apologize for that. Let me just quickly do that. Kaki, how you doing, brother? Uh, 
Um, Everton, no, not really. I just realized that I don't really care for that. I, I don't want people to have to pay for that shit. So it's just the DJing, G DJing tax now. You know, if someone wants to donate, then at least they see that they've donated. Uh, that's really the only... Okay, let's see if this worked. Come on, reset. There we go, bastard. All right, I'm happy to do that. Is it called... What the hell is it called again? Yeah, it's Montagu. Montagu is the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Um... What I didn't know is that Montagu is an actual town in South Africa. This I did not know. Oh, they have a website as well. Where's their Bultong? Do they have their Bultong on here? Here we go. Bultong. I'm going to see if I can locate the Wagyu. No, sadly no. They don't have the Wagyu Bultong on here. But yeah, go fucking try it out, bro. It is really good. It's, like, super good. Um, thanks, bro. I appreciate it very much. Uh, I will have a look. You're very welcome, brother. Uh, got someone to a client meeting. See you guys later. Maria, take care of yourself. Thanks so much for saying hello. Really appreciate that. Doing good, man. Waiting on a new PC to come. I'm finally leaving the shit potato behind. What PC did you get? Cocky. Um, and it's not a sub goal, Avedon. I never had a sub goal for anything. I had a DJing tax, or I, I had a solar fund for donations. Now I have a DJing tax. It's not a sub goal. Do you think Azeroth is the first one? Ooh. Mm. Zadita, how you doing, bro? Do I think Azeroth is a first one? No. No, I don't. Um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I think the first is just in terms of what I want, so it's more of a personal sort of thing. I don't want the first ones to be anything that we know. Uh, I, I don't like the idea of that. I think if you're going to have creatures that is supposed to be as powerful as the first ones, they should be, like, special, right? There should be a very special thing around those creatures. And I don't want Azeroth to be one of those creatures. What I think Azeroth is, from a lore perspective, is a servant of the first ones, or more specifically, perhaps a servant of the original first ones. So we're talking about the two powers at the beginning that eventually then one of those powers split into six and all the rest of it. The other power, so the, the original powers, the second one that isn't part of our universe, I kind of feel like Azeroth might be one of those things. Now, I might be completely wrong. That's just, you know, that's just my opinion at the moment but that's what i think azeroth is um just b based on the reading of the lore and everything that azeroth does that seems to be to me at least azeroth doesn't seem to fit anywhere in uh, our universe right now once you go uh once you go kick first one ass they'll come out with the originals or something no all right so Let's get some perspective on this. Uh, is Azeroth the first one? No. Do we know what the first ones are? No. Are we ever going to fight first ones? No. I don't think so. The thing is, okay, so we have this place in the Shadowlands, in Zerath Mortis. It's called the Sepulcher of the First Ones. Sepulcher literally translates to burial place. It is a, it's a, a mountainous burial place. That's what a sepulcher is. The sepulchre of the first ones. In other words, the burial place of the first ones. Now, Blizzard could do some weird, uh, twisty, turny bullshit with the story that changes the sepulchre of the first ones into not the place where the first ones died, but rather like some other thing. But right now, the reading, as far as I can tell from the lore, it it, it makes perfect sense that every single Xerath realm is going to have some kind of sepulchre, some kind of place where the first ones went to die, 
Why do I say this? Because I believe, in, in my heart, I believe if you read all of the information from the expedition journal that we got from the brokers, uh, it speaks about how the the first ones had to it it had to become more, and so the so the first ones sacrificed themselves in order to create the universe. At least, or at, to be very specific, it states that the the, the first ones sacrificed sacrificed a portion of themselves. So. We can read this in one of two ways. The first one is a portion of themselves. In other words, every single one of the first ones gave a portion of themselves. The other way to read this is that the first one sacrificed some of the first ones in order to create the universe. So what we would look at here uh, from a creation standpoint, from a creation perspective, is that when the first ones wanted to create the universe, they, they needed a catalyst. They needed something that would create life perpetually without needing to stop or needing any sort of interference and that's why they sacrificed either a portion of themselves or a portion of themselves uh, in order to create this universe so that every single thing that has ever been designed everything that has ever lived is a part of the first ones and it kind of makes sense to me if you if you listen to what Merasmus says but as well as in Zerath Mortis there's one of the brokers I believe that tells you that everything that dies comes back to Zerath Mortis in order to live again so it creates this giant cycle now I believe the way in which the first ones managed to ensure that this cycle would always continue and that the cycle would always be is by inserting themselves into the universe. That way their souls are, are anchored within Zerath Mortis. So whenever a soul on Azeroth or in the Great Beyond dies, that soul automatically is anchored to one of the Zerath realms or to the Zerath Mortis realm. Um, that, that's, my, that's my sort of immediate thought. Now... Onto the entire, let's fight the first ones, should we fight the first ones, is that a good idea? Uh, my initial response, like my knee-jerk reaction is no, because there is a point at which you start killing the gods where everything falls flat. It's, it's sort of like, it's the same problem that I had with Shadowlands, where you, you got to peek behind the curtain and suddenly it feels a lot less impactful now that you've seen what's happening behind the curtain. Now, the same would be true for us killing gods because if we were to kill the first ones, we are physically taking on the creators of our universe. This is not make-believe gods. This is not like the old gods, where the old gods are actually fragments of the Void Lords. And we don't even know what the Void Lords are, but the Void Lords might not even be gods. They might be similar to Titans. We could probably take on a Titan if there's enough off of us and we have some outside help. But taking on a first one? I don't even think the Titans can take on first ones. They... I, <laughs> How does a mortal defeat a god? especially if these first ones have the powers that I think they have. If you look at all of our universe, we know that they are the ones that created all of the cosmological forces. We know that. We also know that they are the ones that made the cosmological forces work in harmony with one another. Well, not harmony, but, you know, you, you guys know what I mean. The fact that they have that level of power is is uh, suggests that if they wanted to they could think us out of existence so if we ever went up against the first one all they would have to do is slap is like snap their fingers and we would be nothing because they literally created us therefore how would we be able to fight them now the only universe in which we could do that and i realized that you, you guys might be getting whiplash because i'm going back and forward and sort of trying to figure it out as i go uh, the only way for Blizzard to fix that and for it to be possible for us to actually kill or face a first one is if we are not actually part of this universe. Our relationship with Azeroth changed us. It made us something more. Now, in that universe, we could absolutely take on a first one. Absolutely. 
again, uh, there's so many new inf bits of information that we're now getting, especially with Dragonflight. But if you look at Dragonflight, okay, we now know that the Titans most likely lied to us. That's, of course, if we take the word of the uh, Titan Keepers uh, and we believe that the books are canonical, which I do. I realize there's a lot of people in World of Warcraft right now that refuse to take these books as true because in their minds the light is holy and uh, the titans are holy and and never should the titans be considered evil in any way shape or form which to me is a very stupid way of thinking about it but you know to each their own um from my perspective i think those books are absolutely legitimate they could be fake but for now i'm gonna operate on the assumption that they're legitimate in those books, we know that the Titans lied to us. We also know that there's been multiple lies about the Old Gods and what the Old Gods actually did and what the Black Empire actually was. Uh, we don't actually know what the Black Empire is. We don't know anything about the Old Gods because the only information we've ever really gotten about the Old Gods is that they're enemies. What is super interesting whenever we listen to Zalatath or to the other Old Gods they don't have the same view of everyone else. Zalatath even says this. The light views us as monsters, enemies that should be defeated. But we don't share that view. We view them simply as brothers and sisters that have lost their way. And they shall return to the masters in time. Why? Why does the Void not share that view? What is it about the Void? What is so different about the Void? Um, the, the relationship that the Old Gods have with Azeroth, the relationship that we have with Azeroth, it just appears as if Azeroth is the unknown. And now we go back to the Chronicles. The Titans explain that they arrived at a planet, they told Sargeras this, they arrive at a planet that they... They've never made anything so powerful in their lives. They tell Sargeras about uh, Azeroth and how powerful she is. Is it possible that Azeroth isn't even one of them? Would you guys make any possibility for that? However slight, do you think that there is a possibility that Azeroth isn't a titan? Because if you can even imagine that there is a possibility for it, it opens the door for a whole lot of new questions. Most specifically, what is she? If not a titan, what is she? And if she is more powerful than any of the other titans, what are we? That's my answer. She's a katan shard? <laughs> I mean, it is possible, right? Uh, Caleb, how you doing, brother? On a world at the end of BFA? So not just uh, what we were told. Uh, our, not entirely, because we saw, we saw what the old gods did. But remember, what we're seeing with the old gods now is sort of a post-Black City era. You know, they've been locked up. A lot of their powers may have been completely changed, corrupted, or diminished in some way, shape, or form. So it might be possible that what we've seen is not the fullness of it. Now, I'm not for one second suggesting that the Black Empire was actually this in incredible place where everyone was getting blowjobs all day. Not at all. It would almost definitely have been a place of mad pla things, right? Uh, that's almost definitely because we know that the old gods are crazy and they like making everyone else crazy so it would have been a rather crazy universe i'm fully acceptable uh, or accepting of that uh the the question is what wonders that the old gods do what exactly did they do before the titans arrived because the titans claim that no one should perpetuate any lie that the old gods did anything before they arrived there they the titans were the only ones who ever created anything and that's the last of it but clearly we know that's not true the old gods created stuff it might be very chaotic it might be all over the place but they did create things what is it that they created what is it that ultimately transpired within the black empire these things we don't know <clears throat> Maybe stupid what I ask. Do you think Sargeras could have stabbed Sargeras to try to awake her? 
Maybe Azeroth was put to sleep and the only way she can wake up is if there is some serious damage done to her to be ripped from the dream. Um, One Piece, how you doing, bro? Thanks for the first time chat. Really appreciate that. And yes, I have seen the game and I am looking forward to it very, very, very fucking much. Zazida, by the way, thanks for the first time chat. Really appreciate that. I'm from EU. How much time is it from now that you will watch the new cinematic? Um, uh, not long. I, I can't really tell you how much time it, it depends, but not long. Um, so, yeah, One Piece, I have seen Rogue Trader, and I'm really looking forward to that game. Whose question was I about to ask? Oh, Zetio. Um, okay, so Zetio. The only thing that I can say at the moment is I am quite certain... That Sargeras didn't try to kill Azeroth. I'm not sure about anything else. I realize that uh, that is not the answer, like the full answer that you're hoping for, but that's the best I can do. I know he didn't try to kill her. What he did try to do, I'm not sure. Because if you're going to try to awaken him, you could just scream loudly first, right? Like, before you start stabbing him the fuck away, maybe try a couple of other things. Like, okay, sure, maybe a stab is a good idea, but then maybe not with your fucking sword that is giant. You know, maybe you could try a needle or, um, you know, I don't know, like just reach in or some shit like that. But, yeah, I, I, I don't think he tried to kill her, but I don't know exactly what he tried to do. Uh, it could also be that he was trying to loosen the engines that, that kept her imprisoned. That's another option, right? Uh, Ace the Base, what am I listening to? Yeah, you could just reach in, give it a little tickle, you know, that's all you really need. Azeroth is Void Mommy, the old gods were imprisoned, close to her. Uh, I don't I don't disagree with that. I'm fully accepting of that. Nari, how you doing? Gigantic ass sword, a needle in proportion to Azeroth? No, but again, it, it needs to be thinner. Because <laughs> his, his sword is big enough that it could do some serious fucking damage. Right? No, the Dark Lord. I don't believe that Azeroth is a Void Lord. Think bigger. Think much bigger. Think about the powers that we have not even like, not even encountered yet. That's what I think Azeroth is. A power that we have not encountered yet. It's not on our maps. We know, thanks to Steve Denuser, that if you look at the cosmological map, it zooms out. We know that for a fact. Steve Denuser told us this. That map is only a small portion of the actuality of our cosmos. I sound... We will have to wait and see. Okay, so... Steve Denuser... Steve Denuser has his final chance now, as far as I'm concerned, right? Because this is the first expansion that we know for a fact it is his expansion. He wrote this entire expansion from start to finish, along with the other writers of Blizzard. Let's say his team, not him, but his team wrote this expansion from start to finish. So he everything is now in his control. He doesn't have the luxury of falling back on the, oh, you know, things were quite hectic because Blizzard currently do have a, a story director. So they have someone to make sure that the story has structure. Uh, we also know that Steve Denuser is doing some good things. Uh, like, for example, as, as Preach said yesterday, uh, Blizzard is changing the way they're approaching the story of World of Warcraft to make stories multiple expansions long. So rather than limiting themselves to a single expansion for a single story, they're now saying, no, we're, we have stories that we want to tell, and we're going to let those stories play out in the way that they're supposed to play out, which I think is brilliant. It allows for a number of things. It allows for a lot more development within stories. And I'll be honest with you. It's not that Steve Denuser's stories are 
bad. The stories aren't bad. The execution of the stories is usually where things fall flat. Uh, and this is what goes back to what I said yesterday. Uh, ever since Steve Denuser joined the team, there seems to have been a push for a lot more intricate story design. Like, they really want to tell these very intricate, uh, very highly technical stories that require, like, a lot of time to breathe and a lot of development and a lot of time. The issue is, if you have a story that you have to introduce and finish within a singular expansion, that's not really something you can do. You, you have to rely far more on two-dimensional stories that is easy to tell, easy to follow, easy to conclude. But the new approach, where they no longer approach World of Warcraft as every expansion is its own uh, book, but instead that every expansion is its own chapter of a book, Steve Denuser now has the time. He has no excuses. It's not like Steve Denuser can come out and say, oh, you know, we had to rush because we ran short of time. Motherfucker, you have as much time as you want. So, let's see. I'm willing to give him another shot. Uh... Because this is his first time running the show, right? He's the lead narrative designer now for World of Warcraft. Let's see how that fucking goes for him. It's as simple as that, right? Um, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, no, I don't stream on YouTube at all, The Dark Lord. I do everything right here on Twitch. From the Q&As to everything else, I do right here on Twitch. It's just easier. Uh, jumping from Twitch to YouTube, it's it's such a ball ache. Plus, you do kind of hurt your, uh, your channel if you stream on the same channel as what you're making videos on. Um, unless you're, like, super good at clickbait. And you can actually clickbait people into your live streams. Uh, which I'm not good at, so I, I don't do that. Um, but no, I, I prefer doing everything right here on Twitch and then... Just uploading stuff on YouTube, when and if it makes sense. Because uh, I, I already have, I mean, I have two channels, right? I have the main channel, and then I also have the Clips channel. So I have more than enough content that I upload all the, all, all the time there. Vampire, how you doing, bro? Uh, I really hope you're right, Akalon. Even if I stop playing WoW for one year and go deep into Guild Wars 2 and Final Fantasy 14, I still wish WoW be good again. I, sound, I can respect that. Digit, how you doing, brother? Uh, do you think that approach to expansions makes it harder for people to join later? As in, if you resubbing in the second expansion of the story, you'll have no idea what is going on, uh, as there's so much backstory you missed. I think the standalone expansions have enabled people to jump back in and feel like they haven't got heaps to catch up on. All right, so seemingly that is a huge problem. Blizzard announces, obviously, that they're now pushing stories across multiple expansions, and this seems to be because yesterday people said this, and now I see Vampak, you're saying the same thing. Uh, is it going to make it harder for people to follow the story? Um, yes and no. It all comes down to execution, once again. Um, is it hard for people to follow the Final Fantasy story? No. If you really care about story, all you do is you play the game and you'll follow the story. It's really as simple as that. Um, because the game makes no excuses. You will play the story, otherwise you don't get to max level. It's as simple as that. Now, you're absolutely within your right to skip everything and just go to the end. Um, but they don't even advise that. They don't want you to do that. Uh, so I would say it boils down to... A couple of things. The first is the intricacy of the story and the level to which they can grip people into the story. Because you're going to have to get people invested. You're you're starting to talk now about multi-expansion stories. This means that people are going to spend quite a long time with those stories. And if those stories aren't interesting, if those stories aren't worth investing in, people will check out. So it does definitely put a higher degree of onus or a higher degree of responsibility on the writers of World of Warcraft because they're going to have to be on point with the design of their story. Otherwise, people are going to check out. Uh, then there's the question of what happens if someone joins next expansion? They've obviously missed all of Dragonflight. Now they come in, next expansion. What the hell am I supposed to do now? This is where, again, the onus falls to Blizzard as a developing team. 
If you're going to have multi-expansion stories, you cannot allow people to skip expansions. You just can't. It's not possible. It's not fucking doable. You have to make every single expansion mandatory. Now, I think that's exactly what Blizzard is doing. I think that's exactly what Blizzard is building up to. We see it already. What expansion are new players playing right now in World of Warcraft? If you start brand new in World of Warcraft, you've never played. You start in Battle for Azeroth. You don't even start in Shadowlands. Dragonflight is the next story. When the expansion of the Dragonflight comes out, new players will start in Dragonflight. They will have to play through Dragonflight. And I do think that Blizzard is approaching the storytelling of Dragonflight in such a way that it will always be appropriate. So it doesn't matter. If we're four expansions from now, players are still going to start in Dragonflight because they have to play the entirety of the storyline in order to catch up. Now, the one fear I have is that Blizzard goes, no, we're going to tell the story in two expansions. So what that means is, if Blizzard said, right, Dragonflight and the expansion of the Dragonflight is basically one expansion, but it is two in terms of a story. And then we finish all of the stories for Dragonflight and the next expansion in that time frame of two expansions. And then the expansion after that starts a brand new story. That to me would be a massive, massive mistake from Blizzard. They definitely shouldn't do that. They need to shift to evergreen content. I want to log on retail and queue for Wrath of the Lich King Raid or Black Temple. This will bring the game back to life, I'm sure. There's a lot of things that Blizzard can do to bring the game back to life. This is one of those things. Um, what new players don't start in vanilla anymore? Frag, no. As a new player, you, you haven't started in vanilla in a really, really, really long time. Um, so don't worry about it. King Julian, check the fucking title. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how Blizzard approaches this. Because my opinion is that it should be approached as every expansion links up with all future expansions. So you might have storylines that already start in Dragonflight that will only finish two or three expansions from now. Can you imagine that? Imagine if there is storylines that starts in Dragonflight that only concludes in 14.3. How fucking cool would that be? When you have a story that you've been playing for the last four expansions and you finally get to see the end of that story, you're like, oh my god, that was good. I've been waiting to see how this story is going to end and it's finally ending. You know, I'm, I'm finally getting to see the, the final bits of the story. And then at that time, you already have so many other stories uh, in the works as well that it's not like players are ever finishing the story. They're just finishing parts of the story and then moving into new parts of the story. That's kind of what I want to see from Blizzard because I think that is the solution to everyone's questions and everyone's problems with this. You have to give people a reason to want to play through these things. And that means it starts with Dragonflight. And we already kind of know. Preach asked, uh, St uh, Preach asked Ian, what about dragon riding? You know, will players be able to dragon ride? And uh, apparently that is something that they were thinking of. You know, they were saying, well, you already learned how to dragon ride. Why wouldn't you be able to dragon ride everywhere? Right? So it is possible that Dragonflight is being designed from the ground up to be the starting point of World of Warcraft. So they're making it so that it never falls out of fashion. Every single time you start a new character, you start in Dragonflight. And you play throughout Dragonflight into the next expansion, into the next expansion, into the next expansion and you, you get your character up that way. Now, obviously, I think what they should do for people that are leveling alts, they should make the leveling experience a lot faster. Um, so you should basically, still, as an alt player, be able to choose wherever the fuck you want to start. 
right? So as an old player, you shouldn't be forced to play through all of those. But as a new player, you should be forced to start in Dragonflight and go, go throughout. Yeah, it's sort of like a soft World of Warcraft Realm Reborn. A soft Realm Reborn. Because it is technically not a Realm Reborn. Swanky Tiger, how you doing, brother? Technically, the, the story is just continuing, right? But it's not really just continuing. Because it is a new, fresh start. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. I have seen the new 12-month offer. Uh, I think it's a little bit stupid, if I'm honest. And not just because I hate the fact that Blizzard has these offers. That's not why I think it's stupid. Why, like, outside of people that, that just sub to play for a year, which a lot of people will do. I mean, because I usually do a six-month sub for World of Warcraft, so a one-year sub isn't that much, that, that much more difficult. Uh, especially when I know I'm going to be playing. Um, it's just easier to do a six month sub uh, a one year sub is him. so people that just want the sub they're probably gonna sub and they're not gonna give a fuck what i don't understand is the fact that if you do sub for one year you get diablo 3 the fuck is that like at this point everyone that wanted diablo 3 has diablo 3 no? Like, I mean, is there still people in the world that that want to play Diablo 3 but have not bought Diablo 3 yet? I think mean, that makes no fucking sense to me. So that that to me is like the weirdest bit of this. Buy one year subscription for World of Warcraft, get Diablo 3 for free. Alright. I mean, that's not much of an incentive. That's not an incentive at all. Not for me, at least. I, I own Diablo 3. Uh, I played Diablo 3. I enjoyed Diablo 3. Not as much as 2 with 1, but I did enjoy it, right? Um, when I was in the Navy, I would one-year sub so I could close all my cars while on deployment. Uh, so you close all your, all your cars while on deployment. I can understand that. That makes sense. Lucid, that's the thing that I don't understand. I don't understand why it's a selling point. What I would have suggested, if I was Blizzard, is if you sub for one year, you get Diablo 4 for free. That I could understand. That I could fucking get behind. That 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 doesn't that doesn't bother me at all. Or even if they didn't want to give it away for free, they could have said if you sub for one year, you get Diablo 4 50% off. Right? So sub for a year, get Diablo 4 50% off. I would absolutely sub for one year for Diablo 4. I'm not subbing for one year now because I already own Diablo 3. What the fuck am I gonna do with a, with a second copy? What even do you get if you already have Diablo 3 though? So if I sub for one year now, but I already have Diablo 3, what do I get? Do I get nothing, just the one year sub? Play it twice. Yeah, sounds fun. I'm trying to see where's the post now for this new one year. Come on, you fuck. Here we go. Um, oh, no. This is the one year. Wait, they have a one a 12-month subscription reward for Wrath Classic as well, which gives you this. The Festering Drake Mount. That's not bad. I hate the fact that they keep pushing modern mounts into World of Warcraft Classic, but it's not the end of the world. Wait, where did I see that post? Did Mr. GM troll? I think Mr. GM may have trolled me. Dude, I may have just been debated. No? No, I think I may have just been debated. Hold up. I think Mr. GM just got me. 
there's this fucking picture, bro. Jesus, he tweets a lot. Fucking hell. Uh, yeah, this one. Sign up for World of Warcraft Annual Pass and get Diablo 3 free. Do you think this was a debate? Ali Reza, Wizard, how you doing, bro? Thanks for the follow. Really appreciate that. It may have been a debate. A, a debate. Because I'm not seeing it here. Or am I just not looking? Subscription includes access to both World of Warcraft and WoW Classic, including Wrath of the Lich King Classic. And amount, okay, but... Doesn't state that you get anything else. For Max, I mean, we would have seen a Diablo picture here. You could probably just watch the video. Will they show us what we get? Hmm. No, annual pass is a 12-month subscription. Yeah, no. Mr. GM must have been debating. What does the comment say? He took the old one. Never mind, it wasn't actually a, a debate. He took the old one. That makes sense. I remember now. Fuck! I mean, it still stands. But not the way I thought. It is a debate, but he didn't plan to debate anyone. This was the old one. When you bought... Um, what was it? When you... If you subbed for 12 months, uh, this was literally the year that Diablo 3 came out. This was literally the year that Diablo 3 came out. Uh, Blizzard released the annual pass, and uh, if you subbed for one year, you got Diablo 3 for free. So this is, this is what Mr. GM meant. I wish the new one included Diablo 4. <clears throat> I didn't read this. I just saw this and I was like, this makes no sense. Why would they give Diablo 3 away? So I debated myself, quite frankly. So no, I apologize. What you do get is a bunch of mounts. Again, I think the only people that's going to sub to this are people who already sub to this. Like, I think people who still want to play WoW all the time will sub to this. That's it. I don't think it's going to... I don't think the mounts are enough of an, an incentive, even though this is, like, really cool mounts. But I don't think it's enough of an incentive to get people to sub for a year. Diablo 4 would have been enough of an incentive to get people to sub for a year. 100%. Inactive accounts for... for Stop playing in WOD, and I'm thinking of coming back for DF. I'm wondering if my charge will still be there. As far as I know, Blizzard never deletes characters. They do delete names, though. So if you have your name and it's an active for a period of time, it'll be removed. But the only way you would have lost your characters is if someone hacked your account. Uh, then you could come back to no characters. And if it's that long ago, Blizzard might not be able to retrieve those characters for you. But I don't think Blizzard deletes or removes characters or accounts on their own i remember getting it from a year pre-order sub for mop or so but this mount doesn't exist in my collection anymore how does it not exist in your collection dj yeah I, your what character oh your season of mastery character yeah but season of mastery is bullshit It's too long, you can't get them back. I can't get back my TBC launch Blood Knight anymore. <clears throat> I'm trying to disappear. Have you opened a ticket, DJ? Because that seems like something you should be able to solve through tickets or some shit. Um, Al Valentine, yeah, I don't, I don't quite know uh, how that shit works, to be honest. Uh, I've never been away from World of Warcraft for that long. This is probably the longest I've been away from WoW, is this current break. 
Uh, before this, I've, I think the longest I've ever taken a break from WoW was like a year, maybe. This has like been a solid almost two years that I've been away from WoW. Uh, so yeah, I I don't quite know how that shit works. Yeah, fresh favorites. Uh, so I stopped playing. Shortly after 9.1, when Corthia came out, uh, I was very disappointed. Because you had that entire nine-month drought where nothing was released. Not a single bit of content was released. And Blizzard did, in that time, Blizzard even did a six-month sub thing. Where people could get a mount if they subbed for six months. And then nine months later, Corthia comes out. And Corthia is terrible like absolutely terrible there's nothing special or good about Corthia in any way shape or form and i was like wait i spent nine months sub to this game for this this is what i got for nine fucking months of no content uh so i was really pissed and i i basically un uh, like i quit playing immediately i didn't unsub but i quit playing uh then the lawsuits came and as soon as the lawsuits came it's like right i'm done that's it fuck this i'm out um and i i unsubbed literally the day of the lawsuits and i have not resubbed yet uh but i will be resubbing probably within the week or so i legit watch your videos while i play in order to keep me interested in the raids hey, i'm happy to hear that uh Firam, no it's here we will be reacting to it now. We will be reacting to it now. <clears throat> I have seen it, Swanky Tiger. We watched it yesterday. We watched the whole live stream yesterday. It was good. There, there were a number of things that was said there that made me very, very happy. And then the new battle net. When they merged, I wanted my old characters and they're gone. Yeah, I, I don't know what the fuck happened there, though. Imagine getting the one-year sub for the mount, etc. And while I was having a full year of drought content. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen at all. So, for drought content, you have to understand something. The reason we've had so much drought over the past few years when it comes to World of Warcraft, why there's these giant moments of no content, is just an overdeveloped mess. That's the problem with World of Warcraft. It was completely and utterly overdeveloped. You had so many systems that had to be updated all the time. You had a story that had to be updated all the time and finished as quickly as humanly possible. You had classes that had to consistently be given some kind of borrow power system to make them feel a little bit interesting. All of this takes an immense amount of time to develop. Not to mention the fact that if anything breaks, if you have any of those systems that doesn't perform the way that you had hoped, you are stuck. Because either you forget all of the other systems and you basically spend all of your manpower just fixing the system that is now currently broken, or you kind of stick with the broken system and you just give up on it. You just make it less important. We saw uh, uh, in BFA, Blizzard did this. We saw this in Legion to some extent, although not so much. And then we really saw it in Shadowlands with Torghast. Uh, Blizzard had a plan with Torghast. It's clear that Torghast was supposed to evolve over time. But as time went on, it was very clear that Blizzard didn't have enough manpower to spend on all of their other systems, including Torghast. So they kind of just made Torghast eventually unnecessary. Uh, so people could just blast it and, and be done with it. Uh, it's sad, but it's not going to happen in Dragonflight because Dragonflight doesn't have any of those systems. If you play Dragonflight, it's going to be, I think, a lot quicker for Blizzard to get content out because there isn't all those borrowed power systems. So they can really spend a lot of time just making fun things for people to jump into. And that makes me very, very, very happy. 
<coughs> then it completely stopped on Dave and gets a cliffhanger and straight into the next expansion. Yes, true. And weapons, Warframe Supremacy, let's go. Dude, I have never, I'm gonna be honest, I've, I, I, I played Warframe for maybe all of like two minutes. I did not like it at all. Oh, years ago. Okay, if years and years and years ago. I think the game was out for about a year or so when I played it. And I was just like, ah, fuck this. I hate loot shooters. I'm not playing this shit. Um, I feel like I know what's coming already. What do you think is coming? Yeah, I, I think it's a good bait that Galakron is probably going to show up. It's a good bait, I think. If it was more than five years, it's completely different. Yeah, everyone always says that. No, it's completely different now, bro. Don't worry about it. It's completely fucking different now. I don't trust you guys. You lie to me all the time. It's probably not fucking different at all. All right. Screw it. Let's watch the second chapter of Dragonflight Legacies. Shall we chat? This is why all of you are here, right? You, you just want to watch this. You don't care about the live stream. You don't give a fuck about any of this. You guys are just here because you want to see the reaction to Dragonflight Re Legacies. So... Um, that should be good. All right, here we go. What is your name, child? Emberthal, a commander of the Drakthir. You know of us. You are a race of Fierce warriors, unlike anything Azeroth has seen in many an age. In time, you may become as mighty as we once were. Once? What happened? The desire for power carries peril. We were blind to the darkness in our midst. Uh, here we go. Behold, the Dragon Isles. In the time after our ascension, we Aspects sought to create a beacon of hope for all the world. Beautiful. Nartharian, my general. Indeed, we all had our roles to play. Guided by Alex Strasser, our conscience, our heart, we all became as close as clutchmates, or so it seemed. For we could not hear the whispers of corruption that tempted one of our own. <laughs> Proper evil guy look, what a When demons invaded our world, we aspects went forth to protect it as we always had. Not knowing whether we would ever again see the shores of home. Wait. Our brother Naltharion led our defense against the invaders. But for the first time, we found our strength inadequate. We grew desperate. So when Neltharion assured us that with our help he could forge a weapon to win the war, we placed our trust in him. Oh shit, here we go. And we renewed our battle against the demons, only to have Neltharion, who now took the name Deathwing, turn on his own kind. 
That is not the leader I remember. How do I know it was not you who provoked him? You missed much during your confinement. But the sands of time reveal all truths, child. Even bitter ones. Trust your eyes. Show us. Show me, bastards. When the champions of Azeroth faced Deathwing, for the last time. He was so consumed by madness that he could not imagine what we would sacrifice to stop him. That the weapon we had helped him forge would become the means of his destruction. Was there no other way? Deathwing would have destroyed this world. To stop him, we Aspects relinquished our power, our immortality, our guardianship of Azeroth itself. A fair trade, I believe. You want something from me, don't you? Easy. It is. My gift, and my burden, to travel the pathways of time. But there is one crucial moment that has long remained hidden from me. And only you can lead me there. What crucial moment do you guys think he's referring to? The moment of his death? We know he saw his death. At least he knows that he will die. What he knows is... This is if, if my memory doesn't fail me, which it could. But from what I understand, he knows that he will die, and he knows that he will refuse this death. And if he refuses, he becomes Morazond. Obviously very, very bad guy. We know that this already happens because Morazond already exists in multiple other timelines. Morazond is there. So it could be one of those things where he knows that he will die, but he can't see his death. So he doesn't know exactly how he dies. And he's hoping that if Imbethal can help him, he could see his death. And if he sees his death, he could probably change something about it. He could probably do something else. Uh, that would be my bet. Because what else could it be? There's one crucial moment that I cannot see without you. W what else? We know that they're looking for their power. We know that they need their power in order to exist. Uh, or in order to continue to exist really but what is it that he doesn't see the moment of the things fall to corruption maybe it's, that is also possible why would that be hidden from him unless of course the old gods hid it from him no i'm almost i'm almost convinced that it would be the moment of his death here's why there's a good chance that Morazond removed that bit of the timeline. So Morazond obscured it from him to ensure that he would not be prepared to... Because basically, Nostormu's entire shtick up until this point has been this. He does not want to become Morazond. So Nostormu does everything in his power to push back that, that legacy, that... that prophecy on his life is to try and stop it from happening prometheus how you doing bro happy birthday to you can we get some hearts in chat uh for prometheus uh 
Very happy to have you here, brother. That would be my bait. He wants to see the moment of his death. Now, to be fair, I think this is a really cool episode. Um, I like the way they're doing this. You know, it's five minutes, but it, it gives new players that know very little of the Dragonflights all the information they need. It, it, so it's really cool to me. It's also nice to know that Alex Straza is indeed uh, the quote-unquote leader of the Dragonflights. Uh, I like that. I, I like that they've now like solidly confirmed it. Uh, but most importantly, what I like is the fact that new players are now coming into World of Warcraft. They're getting these chapters, and hopefully by the end of this cha these chapters... New players understand exactly who the Dragonflights are in its entirety. Understands the story of uh, the Dragonflights. Th that would be my hope. Nobody opens up to new lore. Oh, yeah. Listen, the possibilities from here is absolutely endless. Would it not be good for the story if he becomes Morazond against his will? Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to stop it. Because we already know that it happens. It's not like this is some outside thing that may or may not happen. We know that it happens because we know that Morazond already exists. We, we've seen him. We've fought Morazond before. And the fact that the infinite dragonflight exists gives us proof that Morazond exists. Because it's Morazond that creates the infinite dragonflight. So since we fought infinite dragons before and we know that the infinite dragon fight is busy, we also know that Morazont must exist. Uh, the question is just, what is our Nosdormu trying to achieve? Uh, or something related to Titan lies? So he uncovers something that made him become Morazont? Now, you have my interest, Feram. Whenever people speak about Titan lies, I am willing to listen. 100%. It could be. It could be that what he can't see is the exact moment of their creation. Because that is also possible. The thing that he's trying to uncover is the moment of their creation. And for some reason, that part is obscured because the Titans didn't want them to know. The Titans didn't want them to see. So I can I can get on board with that too. What do you mean they were prisoners, Fresh? Prisoners of what? Um, do you think Morazond would try to stop Calakrond? I'm not so sure. Really in the inspired, right? Uh, I think World of Warcraft draws upon multiple sources of inspiration. We do know that they have a D&D &D room, so they most likely do play... Um, they do play a lot of D&D, &D, which suggests that D&D &D will almost definitely have some kind of inspirational effect on World of Warcraft. Sorry, guys, I quickly, I have to waste all of your time now, but I don't have a choice. Don't have a fucking choice. This has to happen. I'll show you guys what I'm up to. The scene happens. Uh, hey there, finally catch you live again. Obi-Wan, how you doing, brother? Final Fantasy is inspired by D&D. I think, look, it's almost without a doubt, the vast majority of fantasy universes can be boiled down to a number of sort of origin stories. Sebi Waves, how you doing, brother? 
so um if you want to go to what is the modern inspiration for almost all fantasy stories it goes all the way back to J.R. tolkien that's it it starts with tolkien lord of the rings is the start of all modern day fantasies almost every single modern day fantasy finds its origins in the lord of the rings universe and then you have uh next up lovecraft lovecraft is huge when it comes to inspiration especially for eldritch things so anything that's sort of darker uh, on the darker side of things anything that has to do with like planetary or universal threats almost always comes a little bit from uh, the lovecraft universe now good luck trying to read the lovecraft universe it is fucking hell from there if you go to most modern day fantasies you're gonna find almost two fantasies that always inspire some of it it is warhammer and dnd almost guaranteed every single modern day fantasy is very heavily inspired by those two because they were kind of at the start of all of it and they're very heavily influenced by lovecraft and tolkien uh, respectively there's others as well there, there are smaller lesser known fantasy influences but for the most part those are the ones that you want to pay attention to so if you want to know the origins read lovecraft good luck there's a lot of books there uh read tolkien good luck it's a long book uh i mean read some warhammer also a lot of books or dnd also a lot of books but those four i would say form kind of the trifecta of all fantasy and of course there's real life stuff as well that they uh that they draw upon quite heavily um, I wouldn't... I don't think the Wizard of Oz... I don't know how much influence there is. I, I'm not well-versed in the Wizard of Oz, if I'm going to be honest with you. It's never been something that's come across my desk. Because usually when I make videos and I speak about something, someone in the comment section will be like, Oh my god, you're basically talking about this universe. And then as soon as I see that, I start reading about the universe. Or I start buying books in the universe. Um... Like, the first time I spoke about the old gods, uh, there were people going, oh my god, this is so Lovecraft. And then I bought Lovecraft books. Uh, and I started reading Lovecraft books. Good luck, by the way. Reading Lovecraft is a like, fucking torture. Um, but, yeah, I've never had someone come to me and say, oh yeah, Wizard of Oz. Um, that's not happened. Morny, how you doing, bro? Those are fighting words, bro. Tom uh, Bombadil is a merry fellow for his boots are blue and his hat is yellow. Uh, Tom is one of the weirdest characters that has ever existed in, in fantasy. I love how Tom Bombadil was, was, is created and what the kind of character he is, but he also frustrates the living fuck out of me. Was it complicated? Okay, so Obi Wan, it uses English that's very old because it's old English, uh, the Lovecraft books, and the way he expresses himself is sometimes so fucking hard to follow. I had so much trouble reading the um, my first time reading uh, Lovecraft was absolute hell. It was absolute hell. I really fucking struggled with it. Screw it. Let's watch the second chapter of Dragonflight. Um, let's do this one at, say, 10. And then this one starts at 10. And then goes... The second chapter of... 200 there does that work Screw it. let's watch the second chapter of that works uh, the story of warhammer hasn't been that influential but the style has it's why we have green orcs for example um Alison, i would say the the story of warhammer has been incredibly influential uh, because oftentimes it's not just about uh it's not just about massive storylines, but sometimes it's really about things like um, themes. 
Like, themes can be incredible. Fight. Ah. <laughs> well, let's quickly hear this. Screw it. Let's watch the second chapter of Dragonflight Legacies, shall we? Chat. This is why all of you are here, right? Legacies, shall we? Legacies. This is why all of you are here, right? You you just want to watch this. Sorry, chat. I'm gonna be with you guys soon. I just want to finish this quickly because this has to go up. This. You don't care about the live stream. You don't give a fuck about any of this. You guys are just here because you want to see the reaction to Dragonflight Re Legacy. So, um, I could probably remove the petty party. That was funny for the stream. You don't care. Yeah, let's remove the fucking petty party, shall we? The reaction to Dragonflight Re Legacy, so... Is that gonna work as a transition, though? You, you just wanna watch this. Yeah, it's gonna work as a transition, fuck it. Um, uh, fuck me, get all up. No, no, no. Wanna watch this? Easy. What the fuck? Come on, bro. Don't do this to me. What crucial moment do you guys think? What do you mean you were throwing? joking, Swanky? The moment of his death? We know he. No, no, uh, that's not why I removed it. But, you know, some some things work really well when you're, like, live streaming. They work really well. And then you have things that that's just, it sucks, right? Because for some reason it just, it doesn't work in a video. It's not going to work. It worked during the live stream because you were sort of chatting shit and whatnot. But it doesn't work uh, anywhere else. Ako, how long does it take you to make a, a video, including thumbnail, title, description? Uh, depends on the video. Like, these types of videos, I like, can be sometimes quicker. But, like, normal videos, probably, like, anywhere from, like, 8 to 12 hours. If I'm making a proper Sorry, video. The moment of his day? We know. Yeah, it takes me a while, because, as you can see, I'm not that good at this shit, right? I'm, like, I'm trying my fucking best to... Do it as good as possible, but I'm definitely not great at it. What crucial moment do you guys think he's referring? The moment of his I'm self-taught as well. We no, he saw he's dead. I mean, he's, I he don't know that he. Dude, I only started editing my own videos, like this proper editing, about three months ago. Uh, before I had an editor, I, I usually, my editing was literally loading the video in and then sort of giving the, the front bit a bit of a fade in and getting the last bit a bit of a fade out. And that was it. That was my only editing that I did. And then I got an editor, and uh, I obviously didn't fucking edit jack shit. And then uh, when me and my editor went our separate ways, I decided, look, I want to learn how to fucking edit properly. So I've been spending a lot of time, like, figuring out, 
different fade in shots, different fade out shots, different uses of footage and stuff like that. I've been having, I've been trying to have like more and more fun with it. Little thing taken with black in and black out. Exactly. On my way to you, uh, to the shop. I thought it's glitching, but no, that's actual editing. Crayon Star, how you doing, bro? Yeah, I, I'm just quickly editing some stuff. Uh, what's this bit? Wait, code. But from what I understand. Okay, wait. This I could probably, I could remove the bot. That's fucking useless. Do I need the bot? Fail me, which it could. From what I understand, he knows no, that no. he will die. Okay, wait. Now we do. Now what we listen. crucial moment do you guys think he's referring? The moment of his death? We know he saw his death. At least he knows that he will die. Wait, that sounds wrong. The moment of his death? We know he saw his death. At least he knows. Yeah, that's a fuck up. That's not gonna work. Hold up. Fuck. Well, this blows dick, but okay, we have to do probably most of this over. Uh, what crucial moment do you guys think he's referring? The moment of his death? We Fuck. That's what that is. Jesus. Alright, I was probably a little bit too aggressive with this shit. The moment of his death? Yeah, I think I was a little bit too aggressive with this originally. The moment of his death? We know he saw his death. At least he knows that he will die. He knows is is this is if, if my memory what he knows is this is if, if my memory doesn't fail me which it could but from what I understand could from what i understand he knows that he will die and he knows that he will refuse this death and if he refuses he becomes morazond obviously you can cut that sound and lower it by two decibels is peaking a few times are oh, you talking about the the peaking there i'm talking about that where it's touching the raid beds and if he ref use this day yeah i could probably do that refuses he becomes morazond day and if he refuses he becomes morazond obviously very very bad guy we know that this already happens because morazond already exists in multiple other timelines, Morazond is there. So it could be one of those things where... One of those things That's some where, good advice, actually. Be one of those things where... All right, for some reason, there's noise there, but I don't know why the noise is there, but I'll just fucking cut that shit right out. Those things where he knows that he will die, but he can't see he's dead. see he's dead so he doesn't know exactly how he dies and he's hoping that if imbethal can help him he could see he's dead and if he sees his death he could probably change something about it do something else I think this is breathing, like, 
parts of breathing. I haven't been able to really fix the compression on my mic yet. My mic is annoying the living fuck out of me at the moment, man. Like, you have no idea. I... About it. You could probably do something else. Uh, that would be my bet. Because what else could it be? There's one crucial moment that I cannot see without you. So, on the... If I'm, like, so... If I'm just speaking into the mic, fresh, it, I think it's fine. Although, would you say the mic is currently a little bit too loud? Because that is probably possible. What else? We know that they're looking for their power. We know that they need... Fuck, fresh. I should get you to edit my videos. Without you. What else? We know that they're looking for their power. We know that they need their power in order to many, us. Many nub. How you doing, bro? Thanks for the follow. Really appreciate that, bro. Welcome to the channel. I do apologize for the boring nature of what we're doing here, but this has to happen, guys. I have to pay the bull somehow. Don't have a fucking choice. Leave me alone. You continue to exist, really. This is what's paying the bulls. This is what allows me to sit here and play fucking... Uh, Let's watch videos all day with you guys. Need to exist, this really. shit. What is it that he doesn't see? The moment of death means fall to corruption? Maybe. It's, that is also possible. Why would that be hidden from him? Wait, you edited YouTube videos for 15 years, Fresh? That's a long ass fucking time. I have not done that for 15 years. Definitely not what I've done hidden from him unless of course the old gods hid it from him no i'm almost i'm almost convinced i think fuck it before i forget let's just go into filter share quickly because i think i know what's going on Yeah, it's almost definitely what's going on. Let's see. This this should be better. No? What's the what's this what's the thing with the mic? Is the sound better? Or do you guys not hear any fucking difference? <laughs> Voicey TV, how you doing, brother? Chris favorites is a joke on a life event that happened to me. Oh nice. Good chance that Morizond removed that bit of the timeline. What happened to you? Or is it something you don't want to talk about? Put it from him. Sebi, how long does it take you to edit videos? So Morizond obscured it from him to ensure that he would not be prepared to... Because basically, Nostormu's entire shtick up until this point, has been this. He does not want to become Morazond. So Nosdormu does everything in his power to push back that that legacy, that, that prophecy on his life, is to try and stop it from happening. Prometheus, I, I would say, Voicey, I started way back when with uh, Da Vinci Pro. And uh, Prometheus, how you doing, bro? Happy birthday to you. Can I would never Martin not chat? use Premiere uh, for Pro. Prometheus. Uh, <laughs> Premiere Pro is... Oh, for the love of fuck, what did I just do? Dude, did I just delete the whole fucking thing? No, I didn't. Did I? No. For some reason, I did jump to the end here. I was about to start crying, chat. But I was about to start fucking crying. You have no idea. Prometheus, uh, very happy to have you here, brother. That would be my bait.
baked. He wants to see the moment of his death. Now, to be fair, I think this is a really cool episode. Yeah, I'm 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 in the market for a fucking clips editor, not gonna lie. It's like the one thing that I need above everything else. I need actually there's two things that I need desperately. I need I need someone that can do rule 34 pictures. So I need an artist. Um, I like the way they're doing this. You know, it's five minutes, but it it gives And then I need an editor. But it, it gives new players that know very little of the Dragonflight all the information they need. Um, I would say it's not th like editing. This is like stupid editing. What I'm doing here is mindless work. All the information they this need. This is not it, usually it, so what really my cool edits are like. It's also not. This is also not my favorite type of editing. I actually despise this shit cool to me it's also nice to know well, that alex straza is indeed what i like when it comes to editing is when i'm editing like proper lore videos because they're what makes that fun is the whole uh you're constantly thinking about okay what goes where what what b-roll am i gonna use where what pictures are going where what sound is going where so it's a lot more intricate whereas this is just fucking busy work this is literally just you're just skimming through it and trying to remove all of the silent bits and all of the breathing bits. And, you know, you're trying to make it as condensed as humanly possible. Uh, the quote-unquote leader. The quote-unquote leader of the Dragonflights. Uh, I like that. Lights. I like that. I, I like that they've now, like, solidly confirmed it. Uh, but most importantly, what I like is the fact that new players are. I like that. But most importantly, what I like is the fact that new players are now coming into World of Warcraft. World of Dog, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Getting Can't these take care chapter. of yourself, brother. Warcraft. They're getting these chapters, and hopefully by the end of this cha these chapters, new players are... Lights are in its entirety. Understands the story. Man, I should start speaking faster and taking fewer breaks when I speak. Like fuck my life. <laughs> Super annoying. That that would be my hope. Yours at the side as well. How much more do I have left of this? Fuck. already exists all right am i done before and the fact that the infinite dragonflight exists gives us proof that morazont exists because it's Morazont that creates the infinite dragon flight. So, since we fought infinite dragons before. Infinite dragon flight. Since we fought infinite dragons.
Now, you have my interest, Ferram. Made him become Morazon. Now, you have my interest, Ferram. Whenever people speak about Titan lies, I am willing to listen. I really am. That's not a lie. willing to listen 100 percent. it could be it could be that what he can't see is the exact which goes back to what we discussed a while ago where we prefer watching streamers for their opinions on games but not actually watch them play it's wild to me because actually some of the hardest types of like streams to do in my opinion at least is gameplay streams they To go through all 48 hour films from the school. Well, I'm looking. Jesus. 48 hours. Holy crap. That's a. It's a long ass fucking time. Alright, here we go. Back to you. Now we do. Mm, at this point, let's go for 50%. I think I just fucked that up. That should be zero. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh, the Titans didn't want them to see. So I can I can get on board with that too. Oh, that's not right. This should probably go up to zero. The Titans didn't want them to see. So I can I can get on board with that too. Okay, that works. Or does it? Put it hours to make a film? Wait, really? Only 48 hours? Ah, oh, it's not gonna let me do all of those clips, or is it? Fuck! Bro, am I gonna have to do it the this way? Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to do it this way. So let's put this to four instead of six screw it let's watch the second chapter of dragonflight legacies this is why all of you are here right you you just want to watch this i don't think that's gonna help yeah i don't think that helps because it changes the sound channel but because i fuck oh this is gonna be difficult chat i don't want to do this I don't want to fucking do this. Oh, I hate my life so much right now. All right, so now I have to go four. Ooh. 
I'm sure there's a way to do this automatically, but I don't know what that way is. So now I'm doing this. Be Stefan, how you doing, brother? But it's like, how you doing, brother? Another short for this whole thingy? What short? How about another short for this whole thingy? Yeah, what short, what short do you have in mind, bro? I wish that I could just do this without even thinking. Well, I mean, it's the price you pay, I guess. Uh, B. Stephen, I'm literally editing that video right now. Bro. Yeah, that's literally the video that I'm... Editing right now. Come on, you fuck. How many more do I have? Oh my lord. There's still a long time to fucking go, chat. Jesus. Doesn't seem like it's. Why do I? What? What the hell? Why is there so many fucking cuts? We're still on eight minutes. Lord, oh lord. There must be an easier way for this. Found the music video. Link it, bro. Wait, is it copyright music? Oh, Jesus. I'm about to... <laughs> You're about to what? Okay, we must be fucking close to finish now. I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, thank God for that chat. We be done. Screw it. Let's watch the second chapter of Dragonflight Legacies. This is why all of you are here, right? You, you just want to watch this. All right. <clears throat> just quickly exporting this and then we'll upload it and then we we done uh well actually we have to make a thumbnail still fuck i hate thumbnails it's probably the thing i hate most i can do all of the like the editing doesn't bother me that much but thumbnails i fucking loathe thumbnails Upload that also then react to you react to you react okay so we're just gonna do reactions all the way down <laughs> <laughs> a long time to finish, congrats mate. Oh, thank you very much, Ace. I I mean I try, right? I return, can it welcome back? Why does nobody ever use pictures of thumbnails as thumbnails? What do you mean? How would that even work, Voicey?
Uh, Beast Haven, I like it. That's the theory that I came up with. Oh, actual thumbnails. I don't know. It's a good idea. There's beard on every thumbnail, man. That's why I'm here. Beardgasm. Ballistic. If only that would get everyone to click, I would do that. I promise. Put my thumbnail and now my thumb. Wait, what? What are you doing? What are you even saying? All right. Mm. But wait, that's not the right, the right thing. What the fuck did I just do? Yeah, that's definitely not what I want to do right now. I want to open Photoshop. Um. All right. Um, now, how do we go about this, chat? Do, 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 do. I think I know. No. Yeah, it should be fine. I'm not sure if this is Okay, that should work Alright, now I need to think, chat What the fuck am I gonna do with this shit? Uh Maybe Zavall was actually banging ass Oh, Jesus Here we go here we go. Chaz, right back at it. Oh. on bastards there we go mm. so chat do we make it small or do we make it large what do you guys think what would be better just this in the big screen and me sort of on the side or should we Make it a little bit smaller. So that's the size of a YouTube thumbnail. Boys, yeah, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do the face swap stuff. So, that's not going to help. Oh, that's not going to work. a little bit just like that should be fine no 
That looks that looks fine. Bottom left and uh, third of uh, third of the bottom left of the screen. You mean over here? Or it should be one three. What do you mean one three? I don't know what that means, Fresh. So let me show you what I have in mind. Uh, American measurements. I think even if you gave it to me and sang to me, this I still wouldn't quite understand what you mean. So this is sort of the idea. This is sort of the idea that I have for it. Obviously background. Uh, so what do we do for background? Wait, am I uploading something? Yeah, um, okay. For background, let's go Dragonflight. R Rule of threes is universal. Okay, but can someone explain to me what the fuck you guys mean when you say rule of three? Because it feels like you guys think you're saying one thing. And I don't think I'm I'm getting what you guys are putting down here. Yeah, yeah, but people are saying the rule of three as if that should mean something to me. So, are you saying that the picture should be no more than a third of the screen? Uh, your f my face should be no more than a third of the screen, and then another third of the screen should be completely something else. Is that what you're saying? So, would that actually be better? Be centered, be in a third of the image. See, I can't make it too fucking small because you're not going to be able to see it after a while. So if I make it like this, it feels like it's that's a bit too small. Like that feels like it's quite small. Or what do you guys like? Do you like the previous one better? This one or that one?
this one. Voicey. I realize it's very small for you guys. Alright, so this looks good for you. Maybe it will make my face a little smaller then. Like this. See your horns now? Make the face smaller. Like this. This could actually work. No? Bring it right a tiny bit, not a lot. Like there. <clears throat> Glasses to the line. There, basically. All right. I have to do just the one thing here. been doing it for too long now you're thinking with portals dude i don't know what i'm thinking i'm just listening to you fucking guys <laughs> i'm not thinking jack shit i'm just doing whatever the fuck you guys are telling me to do actually i don't like that fuck that no just the bigger shadow i think Um, maybe move the shadow a bit. No? Wait, am I moving the fucking shadow? What am I doing? Pretty sure that's supposed to move the shadow, no? Yeah, that is supposed to move the shadow. Like this. Give it a bit of a 3D scene. Him on the rule of thirds it seems to be true. Yeah, I'm really bad at making thumbnails. Like, seriously fucking shit at making thumbnails, bro. I suck at this. What do you mean, back? Bro? Um... So are we just keeping it like this? Not writing anything, making an AI do your thumbnails? Bore Max, I wish that was possible. Yeah, I guess we'll keep it like this, no? The dragon in the back a tad bigger. Like that. With the wings on the background above Deathwing. Yeah, I think this looks, add your name to it. So even if they don't watch, they see the brand. I've never done that, though. Like, that's not something I've ever done. A 
That's gonna be weird. Uh. Yeah, I've never, I've never added my name to anything. I don't think that works with reactions, really. Let's quickly see. Do people do that with reactions? Let's just go. Brown flag reactions. No, not really. Don't you see all faces are facing to the right? It creates disconnect. If you were facing the dragon, it would make it more dramatic. But I am facing the dragon, no? Not really. So you want me to use a different picture? Uh, let's see. What picture are we using then? Hmm. What do you mean flip it around? Flip the background. My face on the right hand side. I can, yeah, I can do that. You see, but now. Well, because I was not facing jack shit there. I mean, if I if I go like this, I'm not facing anything. You like the this one more? All right, but then we have to change this one too. No, not like that. Fuck! How do I fix the perspective on this thing, then? Yeah, that is not good. That's a weird perspective we've got going for us here. Yeah, this perspective is fucked. Well, what do you guys think? Take some D. I'm probably I am, right? the two dragons I can make the background even a little smaller because it's very big so I can move the two dragons a bit more into the frame like this alright so that's just what we're doing now this is this is how it's gonna be. Uh, I need to change the. Yeah. Then you snatch in his mouth. 
I think you'd be better doing what Aspen does, where he just has an image of the content in the video with his face on it. Rykar, how you doing, bro? I mean, techniques being that's what we have here, right? I just have the thumbnail of the video that I'm reacting to, and... Uh, So there. So Vanexer, how you doing, brother? Arkill, I have. Yes, I saw that. And now you can see both in the back also. All right, this looks, this looks good. I think. I fucking hope. Okay, I hope this looks good. Uh, I think your better TV, th better TTV thing isn't working. It should work. I haven't changed anything. Uh, oh, you don't have enough points, Caleb. You fucking cheapskate. The other option, what you mentioned. Let's see if we can see a good picture of that. Of that. Close that shit now. Why are you not big? The fuck. Oh, these guys are all fucking around with shit. Um, the other option is this. Let's quickly see. Copy image. Uh, do new. Alright, so we've got this. And then we just choose a picture. Hmm. Oh, that doesn't work. Yeah, that does not work. Image where you see Deathwing in the background in human form would make a great thumbnail. You think so? 
You don't think this one is good too? Let's see if we can find Deathwing in human form here. Um... Logo in the white space. Peppies and shit in the bottom left. <laughs> wow, you guys just want me to add all manner of random crap. Oh my god. Chat, what the fuck? Um, I'm checking. Hold on. I'm gonna have to do a fucking frame store, aren't I? You would have thought that someone would have taken a fucking... We're talking about this one, the same one that Nixium did. Because Nixium effectively did that. Let's see if we can make this one work instead. Hold up. What do you guys think of that? Do you think he should be even bigger? Or do you think that's big enough? I think that's perfect. Okay, then I'm not gonna fuck with it anymore. We'll just we'll just do that. Holy, how you doing, bro? Okay, Captain Cadillac, how you doing, bro? Need more red arrows and circles. Clip it and ship it. Gotta go, but nice hanging out with you. Old Boulder, thanks for hanging out, bro. Really appreciate it. All right, I think this is, this is good. This is what we want. All right, so this is what we're going to be doing. This is the thumbnail that we're... That we've decided upon. I'm trusting you, fam. I'm fucking trusting you guys. This is what we're gonna do. And that's it, right? Isn't this uh, one about Deathwing, though? Yeah, but that is Death... Uh, well, it's Galakron. Actually, you're right. Fuck. That wasn't the Deathwing one. There was one with Deathwing. But I didn't... Ah, fuck me. Yeah, chat, you guys fucked up. No, it was me. I wasn't focusing. And then I, ah, oh, for fuck's sake, I didn't even save it. Oh, I hate myself so much right now. Um, I should have saved it. God damn it. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see if we can find ourselves. Commander of the Drakthir. You know of us. A nice little race of 
place to pause and take a picture. In time, you may become as mighty as we once were. Once? What happened? The desire for power carries peril. We were blind to the darkness in our midst. Man, we're looking forward to the, the Dragon Isles. The aspects sought to create a beacon of hope. It's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really excited for it. Beautiful. I'll click that now, Fresh. I just want to see if I can find at least one place. Oh, that would have been good, actually. No? We all had our road. Beautiful. Can you imagine that? Would that not be a good fucking picture? It would, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so too. Let's do a print screen. And let's see when he arrives in human You're form afraid. as well. My general. Indeed, we all had our roles to play. Well, you want this? The only thing that I could find difficult here is where the fuck do you put your face? Because you don't want to cover these dragons on the right. And there's not really enough space on the left. No. Guided by no. Alex. Fuck. Too far, right? Kind of like here. That's not right. Notharian. That was actually good. Fuck. Beautiful. Oh, shit. Right there, chat. <laughs> Not that you can see much, but... It's a... Uh, let's print screen this one, too. Because we can always, like... We can always... Try multiple ones, right? Notharian, my general. Indeed, we all had our roles to play. Guided by Alex Straza, our conscience, our heart, we all became as close as clutchmates, or so it seemed. What about this one? Yes, no? Like there. Right fucking there. Right, the Dractor having surprise Pikachu face. <laughs> oh, lol. Why angry? Why do you want angry Echo face? I don't understand. Why? What? What's about? What? Why are we supposed to be angry about it?
But holy, the one that we just found, that's a good one. That's a good picture, I think. Like this one right here? Now we just need to blow it up. See, I'm struggling to find a good place for it, though. Yes, this is going to be very difficult. Maybe a little bit more to the side here, like there, and then we can do camera roll, surprise Pikachu face, or really this is Poggers, should, I should do a, a surprise Pikachu face at some point. What do you guys think? A little smaller. There. What do you mean flip your head around so that it looks like I'm running away from him? So basically like this. So it looks like I'm hiding. <laughs> Actually, what, what makes this re really cool is he's looking at something, right? And I'm looking at something and I'm going, fuck, like, this is, what the hell is that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty similar to the Gold of the Candy Beam. Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, we'll do. We'll do this, like so. He's behind me, isn't he? Yeah, pretty much. Just like this. So now we can quickly add some... Uh... Some contrast and stuff, and vibrance. Like clouds behind you to make it look like you're running. I can't do that though. I'm not that good. I'm not that good, sadly. And on the face and the picture is top notch. I can't do that either. This one looks like he's jabbed you with a finger, not gonna lie. Good and funny, as long as people see it and they go, ha, oh, that's funny. So they wanna click and see more. I don't mind. Hey, it's all good. Because all you want really is for people to take notice. Like, it can look stupid as fuck. People just need to notice it. Like if I really wanted to do a lot more effort here, I'd cut Deathwing out to make him stand out a little bit more from the rest of the picture. But I think this is fine. I think that's fine, right? Luckily you're running away from Deathwing after he found you touching his ass. Well, then that works. 
We're just gonna go with this one, chat. We're just gonna go with this one. Alright, fuck it. Don't close that yet. Change. Uh, what do most people label their reactions, though? Um, I will just do... Can react Dragonfly Legacies Episode 2. I don't think it really matters what you label something. I don't know. Actually, that's good. Bad Dragon. Akalot reacts to Dragonfly Legacies Episode 2. <laughs> We're gonna get a whole lot of people clicking on this video that really wasn't looking for this video. <clears throat> I don't know if it's gonna work though. You wanna you wanna get something that at least grips people at all, but it's fine. So too, what the we fuck am I doing? The whispers of corruption. Chapter two. Chapter 2 of World of Warcraft Dragonflight Legacies is just launched while Dragonflight Legacies. Chapter 2. Chapter 2 reaction. Okay, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> what are you up to outside of the stream since you know TikTok sounds? Uh, I'm not doing jack shit, bro. Um... Wait, is that? That's not right. Yeah. Um. I should keep it unlisted for now, just so I can see. Just make sure. Alright, let's see. This is unlisted. 
it's monetized, it's all good. I think we can make it live. Let's fucking go. All right, there we go. <clears throat> there we go, chat. We've done it. We've done it. The hard work is done. All truth, kind of sus. I, may not rest. I, I don't want to start making shit up, right? Uh, like that. That would be pushing it a bit too far. I don't want to start making shit up. I'm gonna schedule this one for tomorrow instead. Yeah. Germany doesn't want to give up Chinese money. Wait, what? Did th is this? Dude, I'm pretty sure this is just one of those like super clickbait shit. Wait, let's just see. For years, Europe wanted to work with China. Now Europe is waking up to the threat China poses, but Germany still wants to do business at the expense of its own security. Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. You probably know that companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, Orange maybe text? hundreds, Why? most of which you've never heard of, and you have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps stop them. I'll explain more at the end. So a lot of people in Europe really believed peace and democracy would flourish if China was integrated into the global economy. A lot of people in Europe also believe mayonnaise is an appropriate dipping sauce for French fries, so maybe we shouldn't take well, your opinions I should too just, seriously. I'm just gonna say, if you think mayonnaise is a good dip for French fries, you're a fucking heretic. You're crazy. You should never do this. Ever. Mayonnaise is good in a lot of things. Not fucking French fries, though. European leaders spent decades pushing for closer economic ties with China, saying that China should not be seen as a risk, but an opportunity. But things have changed since then. The invasion of Ukraine proved that authoritarian regimes can't be trusted. Who knew? Next, you're gonna tell me that you shouldn't eat raw chicken. Dude, the best things on French fries, as everyone fucking knows, is ketchup and mustard. That's it, that's all you need. Yellow mustard, like at least in South Africa, we call it American mustard. That's it. It's all you fucking need. Or feed chocolate to dogs. How is anyone supposed to keep track of all this obscure knowledge? Now, Jesus. Europe wants to reduce its reliance on Russia, as well as China. Uh -huh. Europe had been taking a harder look at China even before Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Maybe it had something to do with China's intellectual property theft and unfair trade practices. I'm going to be honest with you, the only problem I have with the West and China is America and Europe waged war on places like Iraq, places like uh, Iran is still under sanctions, places like Afghanistan, and a large part of that was the whole, you know, bringing democracy to the countries and wanting the countries to be peaceful and human rights uh, violations and things like that. But then it comes to China and the entire world's like, no, nah, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, who cares about human rights abuses? And if there's anything that we can agree on, and I know that there's not much that we can agree on in this world, I think all of us can at least agree China is not a bastion of human rights. It just simply isn't. The way they treat the vast majority of their citizens are absolutely abhorrent. Just on the face of that, the world should not be doing business with China. But then you go to the areas like, for example, uh, in there are areas in China where Muslims are literally kept in concentration camps uh, because, you know, fucking China. They can do pretty much whatever they want. 
I, I don't understand why anyone would do business with this country. It, it's just an evil country. It's as simple as fucking that. Since 2019, the EU has officially regarded China as a partner, an economic competitor, and a systemic rival. Uh -huh. So they're frenemies. No wonder the world is so dramatic. Countries are basically teenage girls who act friendly to each other's faces, but talk trash behind their backs. But the EU's foreign policy service says Beijing should now be thought of primarily as a competitor that is promoting an alternative vision of the world order. No kidding. I've been that's warning not, about the Chinese just, Communist Party. That's a little ominous, though. Yeah, they're now a competitor because they want an alternative version of the world order. I, it's strong language, I think. And before it was cool. Not to brag, but... Most of the things I do aren't cool, yet. Competitive yodeling will go mainstream. No, it's Let's not. See. Many, Anyways. like the EU's foreign policy chief, recognize that European nations have to avoid creating new economic dependencies. But EU leaders are far from united on that front. Germany stands out like a sore thumb because it's so dependent on the Chinese market. Who could have possibly guess that Germany would do something that upset the rest of Europe? I mean, I can only think of like two times that's happened before. <laughs> Jesus. According to Germany's federal statistical <laughs> office, wow. China has that's been like literally going for the worst fucking example you can fucking go for. <laughs> like just, yeah, fuck you, fuck you, Germany. Do you remember like 80 years ago? Fuck you. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the World Economic Forum shit. Looks like an evil cabal. Oh, dude, the World Economic Forum is absolutely evil. Like, I just looked. Did you guys know that Klaus Schwab, the president of the Economic Forum, he fired a girl for parking in his spot. And they're also not allowed to just refer to him as Klaus Schwab. They have to refer to him as something, something Klaus Schwab, president of the Econo World Economic Forum. You can't ever just refer to him as Klaus Schwab. The dude's a fucking maniac, is, is what he is. Germany's main trading partner over the past six years. China is a very lucrative market, especially for German cars. According to a study published by the Rhodium Group, Germany makes up half of Europe's foreign direct investment in China. German giants like the car makers Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and chemical company BASF he does actually, alone Alex. make up over a third of Europe's total foreign direct investment. Man, who would have thought that car companies that made vehicles for Nazis would be comfortable doing business with an authoritarian regime committing crimes against humanity? Next, you're gonna tell me Taco Bell is comfortable selling food to stone people at 1 a.m. Who can keep track of all this stuff? Uh, that's Germany's not quite fair. England. So, uh, I mean, car companies that made cars for Nazis, if I'm not mistaken, Volkswagen was literally made by the Nazis. No? It, it, wasn't it like a Nazi party thing? Volkswagen, I'm pretty sure it wasn't like a private company that just decided, yeah, We'll do business with you guys, no problem. They they sort of formed out of the same thing. So it's not entirely fair. Yeah, that's like saying, oh yeah, who would who would take any advice from a guy that works for YouTube? You know, and it's like, well, you know, I make videos on YouTube, but that's sort of because it's the only fucking place where I can do that. Um, so I, I don't find he's he's thing there fair at all. What I more so it's sort of like a very dangerous place we find ourselves in uh, for a couple of reasons. But so on the one hand, do I like the fact that the entirety of the West is just absolutely almost married to China in a way that I think is incredibly, incredibly dangerous and not just because of China. Let's remove China's like authoritarian dictatorship. Let's say China was a normal democratic country. If, if most of your economy is reliant on the existence of another country, is that safe? Is that a good idea? I would argue no. I don't mind trade with other countries, 
But if you have a country that you're so reliant on that if that country, if anything happens to the country, you're fucked, maybe that's not a good place to be. On the other hand, what is Germany supposed to do? Companies like Mercedes, Volkswagen, and BMW employ millions of people, most likely. If you track all of the supply chains, they employ millions of people in Germany. So is the German government just supposed to turn around and say, well, fuck all these people, let them lose their jobs, we're no longer going to do business with China? It's sort of like a... It started all the way back in, I believe, the 2000s, because there was an idea in the early... Actually, I think it started in the 80s. The idea in the 80s was that if, if China became part of the economic sort of the west uh, the western world if it became a, a rich country it would let go of communism it would let go of this dictatorship and it would just join the west it would just become a country that's fine with democracy and all that shit obviously that didn't happen not at all china just kept being more and more dictatory uh and more and more human rights fuck you so at the end of the day, it sort of it started back then. They made a lot of bad decisions then, but at the time it didn't seem like bad decisions. Now we look back and we say, oh, that was really bad. But what are you supposed to do now? You have an entire country that if you cut China off, your country falls apart. So I do feel sad for Germany in that sense. What what are they supposed to fucking do? Where do you go from here? Coca-Cola wouldn't sell Coke to Nazi Germany, so they created Fanta instead, equals big business as usual. Fun fact, most people in politics and big business are a massive bunch of assholes. Oh, yeah. You don't have to tell us that quadraphonic. Merkel has been a huge advocate for closer economic ties with China, just like with Russia. She warned against decoupling from China, saying they would be too damaging for Germany. Gee, if only they didn't put themselves in that situation in the first place. Yeah. Working with China is the worst idea by a European since dipping fries in mayonnaise. Many were hopeful Germany would change under current German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. But will it? More after the break. Yeah, you, you have to take steps, Ower, but that's the thing. Even those early steps, even no matter how sort of slowly you do it, there's going to be pain. Now, sadly... I think this is just where the world is right now. There is going to be a lot of pain as the world uncouples itself from Russia, as the world uncouples itself from China, there is going to be pain. And the saddest fucking part of all of this is that the very people that got us into these problems in the first place are not the people that will feel this pain. That's always like... It's the thing that boggles my mind the most. Politicians get to make bets, and they get to basically be irresponsible. Why? Because at the end of the day, they're gambling with our lives. It's not their lives. They don't give a fuck. You know? Do you think Nancy Pelosi is going to be poor when inflation hits 200%? Like, be honest. Do you think anyone in the current government... Turtle boy fucking, what's his name? Who's the turtle boy that I don't like? Mitch McConnell. Do you think Mitch McConnell is going to be one of the people that struggles when inflation hits 100% or 200%? Let's say in a, in a world where hyperinflation is a thing. No. It's going to be you and me. We're going to fucking shit bricks. They're just going to be like, oh, people, just stay strong. We're here for you. We feel the pain the same as you do. And then go home tonight and they eat like kings. That's what annoys me about the current system. We don't have politicians. We have kings and queens and princes and princesses. We have royals that basically do whatever the fuck they want uh, while the rest of us... Well, what exactly do we do? Welcome back. Unless YouTube age-restricted us like they did with our story on the UK. Talking about foreign policy is apparently too inappropriate for kids. When German Chancellor Olaf Scholz came into office, his administration gave some mixed signals. At first, he told Chinese leader Xi Jinping that he wanted to deepen economic ties with China without mentioning human rights or Hong Kong. 
Scholz also hoped the stalled EU-China investment deal that Merkel pushed for could take effect as soon as possible, even though it was delayed because of human rights concerns. Yeah. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it seems Scholz got a bit tougher, at least at first glance. He said China's economic power shouldn't stop Germany from criticizing human rights violations in Xinjiang, and German companies should do more to diversify their supply chains and export markets. Germany's economic minister says Germany is drawing up a new China trade policy that would reduce dependency and vow no more naivete in trade dealings. The minister reportedly even considered new measures to make business with China less attractive. Because apparently, human rights violations weren't not attractive enough. Then again, that probably shouldn't come as a surprise, considering this is still Germany we're talking about. That's not... Meanwhile, Germany... Again, what's not fair about what this guy is doing? You're, you're criticizing Germany, but you're American, pretty much from what I'm hearing here. Name the fucking American company that doesn't have its factories in China. All of them. So what? It's... Uh, Germany is the evil one because they happened to be in a fucking First and Second World War ages ago. But somehow, no, obviously they don't give a fuck. Look, no one gives a fuck. What are you talking about? The entire world is sucking on the balls of Xi Jinping. It's not just Germany. It's the world. America is no better. South Africa is nowhere near better. We're in bed with the fuckers. So at the end of the day, no one can talk here. This is a worldwide mistake. The only difference is that a country like Germany has a lot more to lose than most other countries. Because it's in the EU, it needs to make its, its money in China. So they have a lot more to lose than a lot of other countries because... Well, most of the countries in the EU is fucking broke. So you kind of have Germany, and then you have France, and then to some extent you have the Netherlands, and that's it. So if Germany falls, the EU falls, because most of the other countries in the European Union are fucking broke. They get money from France and Germany. So that makes things fucking difficult for Germany. I don't condone it, I want to be clear. Not at all. I think the world is fucking stupid. China should never have been a business partner for anyone in this world. But it is now. And it's not just Germany that's doing it either. <clears throat> We're doing fine for sure. <laughs> Coke doesn't have all its factories in China. They have a factory, but not all. It's not just Coke. I wasn't even talking about Coke, right? Uh, if you go to most of the country, uh, Adidas, Nike... Um, Apple, well, there's a couple of others that I heard the other day that all have their factories in China. So there's like a lot of them, right? Back chat, wow, already went political, I love it. <laughs> I, yeah, what, what can we do, right? His foreign minister says Germany must learn from its Russia policy mistakes and take that into account with China. Sounds nice, but Scholz himself doesn't want to give up all that Chinese money. Ah, Western leaders and Chinese money. I'm going to be honest with you. Technically speaking, I would not have a problem with any of this if it wasn't for the West's incredible hypocrisy. You see, my personal opinion when it comes to foreign affairs and geopolitical issues is if you and I, so say, for example, I have a country and you have a country, if we want to do business with each other and the business is beneficial to both of us, it's mutually beneficial, then fine. It's not my job to tell you how to run your country. So if you want to be a massive dickhead and lock your people up and whatever, it's not my job. I'm, it's not my country. I have nothing to do with that, right? So yeah, do you do you, bro. It's really nothing to do with me. Um, in that world, you can do business with whoever the fuck you want. And you cannot do business with whoever the fuck you want, right? If you find that a country is just a little too much for you. So, for example, even as someone that thinks that other countries' problems is not my problems, I would never do business with a country that has slavery. Never. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't tell that country not to have slavery. It's their fucking right to have slavery. It's their country. It's got nothing to do with me. 
I just wouldn't do business with them. They wouldn't get any of my business. They wouldn't be able to buy any of my shit. I wouldn't buy anything from them. And that's just how it would be. What I don't like is the West consistently goes around telling everyone else what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to be, telling their own people what they can and can't do, but then they do business with nations that are incredibly evil. The West, for example, best friends with China, best friends with Saudi Arabia, another fucking glowing example of human rights, by the way, Saudi Arabia for you where gay people get fucking slaughtered and where women can get beaten the fuck up if they dare show their hair. And what? Suddenly North Korea is a bridge too far? Like, motherfucker, please. You're doing business with very evil countries, but then just arbitrarily, they decide, no, you're a little too evil for us. Like, how do you make that determination? So that's really my only problem with this, is that it seems to be hypocrisy. That's my biggest fucking issue with this. The most forbidden love story since Brokeback <clears throat> Mountain. Why can't I quit you? Schultz's answer isn't to reduce dependence on China, but to increase trade with other countries. According to him, decoupling from China is the wrong answer. Germany must continue doing business with China. In fact, he welcomes direct foreign investment from China crediting China for saving many German companies from going bankrupt. So instead of breaking up with China, Schultz is saying they should stay with China, but true. also start seeing other people. Yep, I can't think of a single time when a couple decided to have an open relationship and it didn't lead to any other problems. You know this is a terrible idea because it's being praised by Chinese state-run media. Oh yeah, fresh, I'm, I'm aware of that, worried. but... For example, the port of Hamburg. Most wars these days are also fought for politics and economics, not for the actual thing that they claim. So, for example, George W. Bush told all of us, and I say all of us because we all paid the fucking price for that one, oh, they have weapons of mass destruction, and also they're very bad to their people. It wouldn't be until, like, fucking a decade later that people find out, actually, they just had a lot of oil. Um, and there were a lot of fucking companies that made military weapons and shit that wanted to make some cash, you know? They, they wanted to get a quick payday. And so whenever America goes to war, all of these uh, arms manufacturers make crazy cash. My country is an extremely good relation with China, but I fear China will soon dominate everyone and no one can do anything about it. Kaki, I would not be that quick to say that. Is Germany's biggest seaport. It's considered the country's gateway to the world, but above all, it is a gateway to China, which is the port's largest customer. It also just so happens to mm. be where Scholz used to be mayor. And I've been covering news long enough to know that when you hear someone say, it just so happens, it actually means because of course it is. Chinese shipping giant Costco was just given approval to buy a 24.9% stake in one of Hamburg port's three terminals. Supposedly, the approved investment does not give Costco any say in management or strategic decisions. But the yeah, German foreign not. ministry, which has been hawkish on China, was so furious, it drew up a note documenting its rejection of the decision. Nice. <laughs> an angry note. That'll show them. The note said the deal would allow China to control Germany's transportation infrastructure and increase Germany's dependence on a foreign adversary. Makes sense, given that Costco is a Hong Kong-listed subsidiary of the Chinese state-owned company, China Costco Shipping Corporation. That company's subsidiaries provide direct support to China's Navy. Costco already- Kind I wouldn't agree with that because borders have always been part of our history. Uh, the only difference back then was that borders were sort of related to tribes and not really related to countries. It hasn't been since very recently in terms of human development that country borders have become a thing, right? But tribes have always gone to war. If you go back to the uh, the Viking era, uh, the different Viking cities were constantly at war with each other, fighting over resources, fighting over fucking disputes and differences. Um, and at that point, at that point in time, it wasn't so much countries; it was literally just tribes. 
just different tribes invading each other. So I would say borders have pretty much always been a part of us. The only difference now is we've made our tribes a lot bigger to the point where I think it's too big for most people. Like, most people don't give a fuck about their country. If you if you speak to most Americans, this is always something that I find super interesting. When I ask Americans where they're from, they almost never say America. Like, whenever I speak to an American and I go, oh, where are you from? It's never, oh, from America. Never. It's, oh, Kentucky or Texas or California. It's always the state, never the country. And the only reason I can think of that is the vast majority of Americans don't really give a fuck about America. America's too big. There's too many people. You don't know the people in that country. Who gives a shit? So you care about your state, but probably most importantly, you care about your city. That's sort of the only thing you can care about is your town or your city. And then, you know, your state just sort of because you live in that state. And then the country, but just sort of because your state is in that country. But outside of that, you don't really give a fuck. Um, so I, I would say we have a very, very long way to go if we're going to start moving away from things like borders. I, I, and I don't think humans would be able to cope with that, if I'm honest. As of late, China has been donating a lot, and I do mean a lot of military power to my country, which has been turning a lot of negative attention to us, and I honestly cannot handle another bombing. Am I allowed to talk about this, or is it too political? Dude, what country are you from again, Kaki? Watch the video claiming historically the size of the village across all the world was 124. So, Caleb, uh, from what I can tell, it's been 145, so somewhere between 120 and 150, I think, was the average village size. And it seems to be also what humans evolved to handle. Anything more than 150 and humans become incredibly agitated. It's too many people. We don't know who to trust. We don't like it. We need less than 150 people to be fine. Pumpkin Spice, uh, Twinkies hit different off topic. I know. What the hell? What the hell is Pumpkin Spice Twinkies? Own stakes in Europe's two largest ports at Rotterdam and Antwerp controls the port of Piraeus near Athens, and has plans to expand at Duisburg, where the Ruhr and the Rhine rivers meet. So while Chinese money may not grow on trees, it does have deep roots. Scholl's own political coalition, the Greens and the Free Democrats, are divided over the sale because they see how much of a threat it would pose to critical infrastructure. And yet, an investigation by German regional public broadcasters found that Scholl's backed China ignoring warnings from six federal ministries, including the Greens vice chancellor. I guess love is blind after all. More after the break. Okay, something bothers me about this chat. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's been established now. I don't think it's conspiracy anymore. I think it's been well established now that China is funding Russia to a very large degree. They like just super funding Russia at the minute. Like China is buying a crap ton of Russian oil. It's buying a shit ton of Russian food. Like China is keeping Russia in this war. You know, if Russia is the is the 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 quarterback, China is the guy screaming, you got this, right? Kick his ass, sea bass, that kind of thing. So if Germany is strengthening its ties to China, is it not in a sort of weird roundabout way strengthening its ties with Russia? And I say weird roundabout way, every bit of money that Germany pours into China is ultimately ending up with Russia because China is funding Russia at the minute. This is why uh, America is so hard on China right now. This is why America is constantly fucking up China because, well, China keeps funding the Russian war machine. What is this? Like, what fucking world do we live in? On the one hand, Germany tells Russia, go fuck yourself. How dare you invade Ukraine? But then it goes, oh, you guys are funding Russia? No problemo. Uh... 
here, have a bunch of new cars and shit. How about you make us some stuff that we can buy from you? <laughs> All right. What fucking world do I live in? Uh, Chris, how are you doing, brother? Uh, take care, man. Have fun at work. Welcome back. Olaf Scholz insists that Germany will not decouple from China. In fact, under his chancellorship, German dependence on China is growing at a tremendous pace. In November, Scholz will visit China for two days with the business delegation, making him the first leader in the G7 to visit China since the start of the pandemic. It's no surprise that car manufacturers like Volkswagen yeah, are fun. in his delegation. No one seems to be worried about reducing dependence on China anytime <laughs> Quite soon. Quite funny, pretty much, Germany yeah. At China the same it is a clown world. Like tequila. What's the problem? They just make me more fun. In fact, Germany's ramping up investments. Manufacturing is headed away from Europe to China. Germany's industries say a general containment of China or decoupling is not an option. What this is dangerous fuck, because China has already shown that it will use leverage over Germany to push its agendas. According to the head of Germany's Federal Intelligence Service, there's still a lot of trust and naivety in Germany's business community. I guess besides China, Germany's other biggest ventures are buying swampland in Florida and helping out Nigerian princes. One of the challenges here is that maybe Germany won't get tough on Beijing if it invades Taiwan. Fortunately, not could everyone it? in Germany thinks like that. Let's just hope Germany doesn't enable another authoritarian to start a world war. I mean it, Germany. Three strikes and you're out. And this episode is sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything uh, online, there's a huge number of companies that collect your personal data. Your name, your email, your home <clears throat> address, your credit card info, and Who will go more. to war? That's why I signed up for Incogni. When I signed up in February this year, I discovered there were 76 data brokers that potentially had my private information. Since then, that number has grown to 134. And that means companies are buying and selling. Wait. That's not a good ad. At the beginning of the year, before having Incogni, there were only 74. Since getting Incogni, there's now 134. So it's basically doubled <laughs> since he's got Incogni. I don't think that's what he meant, but I just, like, that's not the right way to fucking push an ad, bro. Telling my personal info. Obviously, there's the moral outrage, but the bigger problem is that these companies can be hacked. And my data can be stolen by random people in China or Russia or even Germany. Data breaches are on the rise this year, which means my personal information is at risk more than ever. Fortunately, Incogni is working hard to force these companies to delete my data. Eight months after signing up, Incogni had already gotten my details removed from 58 of these data brokers with 76 more in progress. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. Incogni just handles it. So I recommend you get Incogni for yourself. Click the huh. link below or go to incogni.com slash I bet that doesn't work in the South Africa, The first 100 though. people to use the code uncensored will get 20% off. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored. Formax, the biggest issue, though, is it depends on what kind of computer chips we're talking about. If you're talking about the very advanced ones, uh, from what I understand, that can take even longer. If you go for the top, top advanced computer chips, uh, like the ones that go into cruise missiles and stuff like that, you're talking about like anywhere from three to, I think someone said nine years, depending on machinery, because those chips are made by, like even the machines that make those chips are specialized to fuck and it's made to order so you can't just go oh yeah i'm just gonna make a bunch of these chips you have to physically have the machines made and then you have to build an entire clean room because those things are so fine that there can't be any dust anything it's a clean room that goes on there you have to build that entire factory you have to set all of it up and then comes the actual honing in process which actually probably takes even longer like it takes nine years to bolt the entire facility and then it can take like a year up to two years to like 
hone in those machineries like so that they can actually make the chips uh, that we use. So at the end of the day, Taiwan cannot fall. This is this is why the, uh, America, I believe, this is why America has not gotten involved in the war with Russia. Because America knows the second it involves itself in the war with Russia, China invades Taiwan. Because America can't fight a war on two fronts. And China knows this. So America is not getting involved in the Ukraine because it needs to keep all of its troops, all of its navy, all of its planes ready for that penultimate invasion of China, uh, of Taiwan. Because if Taiwan falls, the world is, to put it lightly, pretty fucked. Because, yeah, China's not going to share those chips with anyone. Right? China's going to be like, our chips, we make things now. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a weird place that we find ourselves in at the minute. <clears throat> Yeah, I did hear uh, someone someone told me that America does have a backup, shall we say, scorched earth policy on that shit. So if China does invade, um, America will just blow up all of the factories. Captain Kallak, yeah. They do. Because, okay, so these chips, we're talking about nanometer chips, right? So if there's a little bit of dust, the chip's done. It's toast. You can't have dust. You can't have particles. It has to be an absolute clean room so that they can actually they ensure that these chips are perfect. Because there's also, like, oxygen problems. If the oxygen isn't absolutely clean, um, or if there's too much oxygen or too little oxygen... That also fucks up the chip making process. So it's like it's incredibly difficult how this shit works. Uh, take the UK as another example with the Brexit issue. Cambridge Analytica was used as the PR machine leading to the rise of in anti-EU rhetoric and nationalism. Behind the scenes, the real reason for Brexit was due to the City of London wanting to protect anonymous investors and shareholders. Why? Because the EU was contemplating laws regarding a shareholder register which would go much further than, say, companies house here in here in the UK, which only declares a company's persons of interest. I would say, so, you see, the problem with populism, like, for example, with the Brexit vote, like, for example, Trump in 2016, populism doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, for those of you that know anything about history, the greatest thing that ever happened for Adolf Hitler was the stock market crash. When the stock market crashed, before the stock market crashed, Adolf Hitler had something like 6% of the support in Germany. Something like 6% of Germans actually supported Adolf Hitler. Then the stock market crash happened, and Germany got fucking hammered. They, the German people were poor as fuck. By the end of that, Adolf Hitler had a majority support. Populism never happens in a vacuum. For populism to flourish, you need a, a a reason for people to vote for populists. And that usually comes because politicians don't give a fuck about their people. So if you have places like, even in the UK, you have so many of the mines there that's gone completely broke. So many of the factories that's been shipped off to other countries in the world due to globalization. So now you have a huge group of people they don't have jobs. They don't have skills to find other jobs because their jobs have been shipped overseas. What do they do? Because all the other politicians, if you listen to all of the people that voted Remain, they just spoke about all the cheap shit that they get because of uh, because of being part of the, uh, the EU. All the traveling that they can do and the fact that they have visas. Oh, they don't need visas. They can just go wherever the fuck they want. And it's so beautiful. But remember... The people that voted for Brexit, they don't even have the money to travel because their factories have been closed down and shipped off. Uh, the immigration that is coming into the UK is hurting them directly because they can't compete at the prices that some of the immigrants can work at. And that's where populism starts, in the hearts of people that are disenfranchised. It's sort of what makes me scared for America 
because the entire Midwest of America have been completely forgotten. Uh, you have people on the coast speaking about these people as if they don't matter, uh, which is very dangerous because, yeah, those people can fuck your shit up. These things don't happen in a vacuum. They happen for a reason. And to pretend like the reason is silly is to basically ensure that it will just keep happening. For Germany's uh, economical fall before the Second World War was due to the First World War's end result. Uh, kind of, yes. Because, okay, so what, hap what happened was <clears throat> Germany was incredibly over leveraged due to the treaties of Versailles. I mean, the treaties of Versailles was unfair no matter what. There's not a single person in this world that looks at the treaties of Versailles and says that was a good idea. No one does that because it really was a fucking horrible idea. Basically, they took all of Germany's manufacturing potential, all of their mines, all of their resources, gave it to other countries. Even areas that historically have been German was given to other countries, right? And then they also made Germany pay like millions upon millions upon millions of its own money to other countries. You you have a country that can't manufacture jack shit also having to pay a shit ton of things to other countries. So yeah, Germany was already struggling, but its government was really the problem because the government, in order to keep this ship rolling, which is basically printing shit, right? it was just printing money and doing its, all sh its own thing. And everything was doing fine because the stock market was fine, America was strong, all was good. And then suddenly the stock market crashed. And when the stock market crashed, the German franc couldn't survive, right? It, it was just too weak. So it crumbled. And overnight you had like hyperinflation uh, in Germany. And this is where Adolf Hitler stood up and said, hey, I have an idea. Uh, it might not be cool, but let's kill all the Jews. And no one fucking thought to ask, how's that help? Like, not a single fuck looked at him and went, huh? What? Um, let's try and reform the banks first. You know, let's, let's try a couple of other things. And then, you know, if that doesn't work, we can revisit this idea. Let's put that on the back burner for now. We'll, we'll get back to it at some point, right? Everyone was just like, fuck yeah, let's go. Let's kill all the Jews. I don't know what the fuck happened there, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Nakatone, how you doing, bro? Thanks for the first one, chat. Really appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. Uh, they took their shit, too, though. Jesus Christ, so many subs in chat. We're invading. Cocky, fuck you. You guys aren't strong enough to invade us. Don't don't come here with your own, oh, we're Russian. We can do whatever the fuck we want. You guys aren't Russia. You might be Russia's little brother, but you're not Russia. You guys just need to shut the fuck up, right? Because we can actually invade you. You're not a nuclear superpower. Um, mein Kampf, he makes a compelling case. I read it when I was much younger. I think I was like 16 or 17 when I read Mein Kampf. Um, I did not find his case compelling. Because his case is only compelling if you don't consider the holistic view of the world. Because he makes a lot of assumptions in Mein Kampf that if you... If you explore the assumption, it falls apart rather quickly. Which is usually my problem with a lot of fucking people that try to be intelligent that isn't. They'll make assumptions, and the assumptions seem reasonable, so you just go with it. And then they make this giant claim based on that assumption, and you go, Oh yeah, that must be true because the assumption seems reasonable. But then when you explore the assumption, you're like... All right, the, 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 this doesn't actually track. Um... But it's been years since I've read Mein Kampf, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust my my ability to remember most of it. So I might be wrong. I, I should probably read it again at some point. Although it's a very difficult book for me to read, uh, mainly because I, I, yeah, you don't feel great, right, whenever you read something like that. <clears throat> Five a.m. Time for sleep. Have a good one. Fresh favorites. Thanks for hanging out, bro. Really appreciate it. Take care of yourself, brother. Uh, we're going to do Q&A soon. Not that this is an excuse, but it's not like information sharing and comparison in the hands of the common person existed in that era. If it wasn't on the radio or in the newspaper, we were functionally blind to it happening. Digital Pop, very true. 
I mean, I'm not blaming, just to be clear, I'm not blaming the, the German people. I'm blaming politicians, as I always do. Because I think that you can trace almost every single atrocity that has ever happened throughout the history of the world back to politicians. And I include religious leaders in that because there used to be a time where the religious leaders were our leaders. So basically, I should probably say I trace it all back to leaders. They are the ones that go to war. If I ask anyone in this chat, like, when's the last time you guys thought, you know what, we should really invade someone? Like, when's the last time you walked up to your wife or your husband or your children and said, right, get your swords, we're invading stuff. Let's go invade someone. Ordinary people don't fucking think like that. Quadrophonic, thanks for the two and sub, bro. Really appreciate that. Welcome to the DJ Nation. Appreciate you, fam. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ordinary people don't think that way. Ordinary people want to live their lives. They want to fucking go out with friends, have a barbecue on the weekends, or go have a drink on a Friday night. They don't have time to invade anyone. Like, all right, we can invade someone, but I have to be back by nine because I have work in the morning. Like, that's usually the response that people would give you if you walked up to your friend and was like, fuck it, let's go invade some country. People would be like, yeah, can we do it next week? I've got a busy week, you know, I've got a lot of work. <laughs> let's see what happens next week. It's politicians. Because they're not the ones going to war. They're not the ones dying on the front line. So it's easy for them to say, yeah, let's go to war. Because it's other people's children. It's not them. And that, man, it gets, that makes me so fucking angry. I should not even speak about this because I get, I get literally super angry over this shit. Uh, 